two of the most revered jumpers in our great game. Two famous Guernseys that represent the ultimate in pride and passion. The Crow Eaters and the Big V. The VFL and Sandville haven't met in eight long years, but this rivalry is forever. Victoria and South Australia have been at each other's throats since before the States even existed. It's a deep-seated hatred that stretches all the way back to the colonial era of 1879. And this afternoon, we write the next chapter. It's the Sandful versus the VFL, the Crow Eaters versus the Big V, live from Glenelg on Seven's Match of the Day. Let's gather round in Adelaide's a buzz as this festival of footy brings us to Glenelg Oval, the home of the Mighty Bays in these days known as Stradorama Stadium. Played host to so many iconic rivalries over the past century and this afternoon it provides the stage for one of our game's most passionate, South Australia and Victoria, as the State Leagues battle for bragging rights for the first time since 2016. Good afternoon everyone, Jason Bennett alongside a man who had the honour of pulling on that magnificent South Australian jumper against the Vicks. Former Crow, Rhett Biglins. Rhett, state footy, it's so exclusive, it's so rare these days. What did it mean to you? The passion doesn't get any more. When, when you are in this game itself, when you see the talent around you, the best talent on show outside the AFL, this is where it rises to another level. And I, I think we're going to get a, a ripping game this afternoon. Well, it's been 145 years since they first met. Both were colonies at the time. Victoria historically dominant over the decades, but in recent time, it's been decidedly lopsided. The Crow Eaters winning the last four, which have been too far and few between. The VFL's last win over the Sample way back in 2002. Can they end that drought this afternoon? Here come the Vicks, led out by Werribee skipper Dom Brew, who's closing in on 100 games. Great honour for him to lead the VFL for the first time. The Big V. Plenty of experience, 13 former AFL listed players. Red, here's their lineup thanks to Truck Assist. And Dom will lead from the front. Straight into the engine room, that uh, midfield battle today will be pinnacle to see who will uh, basically take out this match. How do you squeeze this much talent into a team? This is an absolute credit to Nigel Carmody, the chairman of Selectors, <laughs> one of our very own on Channel 7, to be able to produce this sort of lineup from across the country. And, uh, well, it's, always, it's an all star lineup, really, isn't it, Jason? And the man in charge this afternoon, Box Hill coach Zane Little John, here he is with Soda. Hey, Zane, great atmosphere down the bay. Welcome along. Uh, what a great way to incorporate this in Gather Round. Um, you loving it? Yeah, absolutely. And I know our players are too. This is, um, I guess, the home of footy for the for the weekend. So we're wrapped to be here. And um, where else would you rather be on a, a sunny day in the bay? Great opportunity for you uh, looking after this team. But you've got guys from all over Australia. You bring them all together. How do you instruct these guys in the type of footy you want them to play? Yeah, I guess all we've been trying to do is just harness what the VFL's about, and it is about that. We've got 21 teams in our competition, and uh, players, as you say, all, all over Australia, from New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria, so they've been fantastic, this playing group, in just, you know, really trying to connect as close as they can, and um, ultimately all I've got to try and do is just keep them on the on the straight and narrow and see the ship. Big job, mate. Have fun. Enjoy it. Thanks very much, Sardis, Vivian. Here come the Crow Eaters. The South Australians run out on a Glenelg Oval led by Eagle Joey Sinor. Leads them out for the second straight year. Sample have been a rep powerhouse in modern times, Rhett, and their afternoon lineup. 12 former AFL listed players. Here it is, thanks to Truck Assist. And a handful of state debutants as well, so some fresh blood will have a say in today's outcome. So, uh, star started midfield, as we mentioned, the, the ruck battle is going to be important, but seven premiership players for the Tigers on their home deck today. They know this oval so well, and the forward line is so potent with three of the important Tigers in Hosey McBean. Uh, also, just getting in there. In and amongst the ground level, also important in the air. The man in charge again in 2024 is Jade Rawlings here with Soda. Jade, welcome along to the bay. Um, look, a great buzz about this. And what about the Tasmanian connection? Everyone's jumping on the devils. We've got Tasmanian coaches. Yeah, Zane is from North Launceston. Uh, he's going to coach the VFL. And I just think it's great that our guys from interstate, whether it be Victoria or Tasmania, can come into our competitions to be recognised for their performance for, from, as players. So, yeah, we've got a strong squad, a uh, healthy flavour of Glenelg. Uh, but a good spread amongst all, all teams. And, yeah, we think we've got a team that should stack up pretty well today. So many faces from last year's state team that went really well, but there's some new blood as well, which would be exciting to watch. Yeah, a combination of both. Callo and Lowe both come into it. Carl Finlay from North Adelaide comes in. Uh, Harry Grant for his first game. And then we've also got Luke Reynolds, Riley Knight, Harrison Wig, who didn't play last year. So some pretty handy guys to come back into the team. Mate, have some fun. Free-flowing. Let's see plenty of goals and uh, a really big game. League with us, think so. The countdown of the opening bounce is on. It's the Crow Eaters hosting the Big V. It's state footy and it's coming your way next.
State footy at Glenelg Oval. The two teams lined up for the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please now be upstanding for the singing of the Australian national anthem. Great crowd in, beautiful day at Glenelg. Pretty warm conditions, Mark Soderstrom and Rick Biglands, and this is going to be a hot contest. Well, Jase, uh, 21 degrees, top of 22. I don't know, Biggles, if you can have a hot 21, but it does feel like a really, really warm day. Stage is set, the ground is in magnificent, Nick, and for anyone watching who's seen the Glenelg Oval in the past, particularly if you're interstate, it used to be a big quagmire in the old days, Biggles, but now, surface-wise, very nice, hosting some district cricket as well, so it's good, Nick. And the number of uh, Victorians who we saw coming through the gates as well, they were excited to be here with this festival of footy at the moment and gather around. So there is a good crowd that will be filtering through for perfect conditions. So we will see some speed on the ball this afternoon with this talented midfield. Number of SANFL players familiar to Victorian viewers, including former Essendon and Port Adelaide player Will Snelling. He's returned to the Sandford with Sturt, coming off 26 disposals, nine tackles, six clearances against Norwood in the opening round. And not only are there a lot of Victorians in the crowd, a lot of recruiters here. And this is a player that recruiters will have a close eye on today for that mid-season draft. The battle is massive in there. Don Brew may use his hardness to minimise that, but his clearance work is what his specialty is. Former North Adelaide and Port Adelaide AFL player Boyd Woodcock plies his trade for Southport these days, second in last year's list and he's started 2024 with a bang 44 and 2 against Port Melbourne then 30 and a goal against Werribee Yeah, best on ground without doubt against Werribee The Premiership player, he would have seen what uh, his former teammate Connor Rosie did last night on the big stage with his speed and explosive, they both played at North Adelaide in that Premiership side and uh, he'll be looking to, to emulate that tonight, midfield forward, exact same role Tom, Tails. Uh, <laughs> that is the Tails. Don Brew wins the toss for the big V. South Australia led by Joey Siner, 124 game veteran for Woodville West Torrens. Since 2010, been a great heart and soul player in the SANFL. Really good player, Joey Sinor, and look, he did a lot of work, played a lot of twos footy before he really found his going here at Woodville West Tyron. So he's obviously been rewarded for his great performance last year. Another player really worth keeping an eye on is Casey Voss, uh, obviously son of Michael. He finished uh, winning the Foss Williams medal a couple of years ago. Really, really good player. Played a bit of twos footy at Sturt before he found his feet over the last couple of years. He has been really important, and his work off halfback, Biggles, has been elite at this level. He is versatility personified, isn't he? Halfback or on ball. And when you think about this match, South Australia versus Victoria, the names that have emulated themselves out of this, and of course, not only that, against Western Australia, Tim Kelly coming out of a state game, Matthew Pavlich coming out of the 99 state game, and going on to bigger and better things. So selectors and AFL recruiters and list managers are all here to have a look at the talent on show. One late change for the Vicks, Cal Porter is into the lineup. Louis Pinnock out with a quad injury, so disappointment for Louis, but Cal Porter experienced player at both VFL and spent some time on the Bulldogs list, played an AFL game for the Dogs. Jase, what's going to be fascinating too watching this is the two Ruckman go at it. Biggles is a big man yourself. I think you're going to love seeing this contest because two of them are essentially both big brutes. 
They are, and uh, just the way in which they're going to... Uh, I think that was an important selection for Victoria to try and match up against Boyd because of his not only his second efforts and his clearance work after the event, but to be able to match him in that strength and size department, Crosley is a moose of a man, a massive man, and you get this first bounce is going to set the tone. So we are set to go. First quarter action, thanks to Truck Assist. It's a new chapter in one of the game's oldest and fiercest rivalries, the Crow Eaters and the Big V. It's the Sandful and the VFL for the first time since 2016 on Seven's Match of the Day. Uh, just set up beautifully too with Boyd and Crossley going at it and Big Braden gets that first little tap down to himself and he's wrapped up pretty quickly here by his counterpart there. He's opposite number, if you like, in Harry Boyd. Again, Crossley using that left hand down very very nicely and deep little give is good comes out towards brown the son of a gun high ball up defensively good work by proud sharked on and moving quickly tackle on there and we're going to get a bit of a stun mark there josh ryan west adelaide reigning best and fairest with the headgear in action there so the victorians were really worried about james rowe and he's how he's not only his footy smarts but he's pressure up there so at the moment Porter's gone to him to try and quell his influence Brew and Declays back to Don Brew and kick towards the pocket Woodcock there outsized Ryan got his hands to it he's then wrapped up immediately by Hugh Dixon Josh Ryan 88 game veteran for West Adelaide a Victorian born in Mildura grew up in Mildura been at West Adelaide since 2016 best in Ferris last year Crosley with strength and power Snaps goalward, it's across the face. Off the hands of the contest. Jason, it was Hudson Garoni. So, um, Harry Boyd has certainly had his way the last couple of years just with his physical size, but you can see straight away this matchup with Crossley is going to be fascinating because you would think at the moment there, the, the Victorian from the Southport Sharks is looking like he's in really good shape against him. And he's certainly a big body, and then there's Brew at his feet. It's flipped out. Woodcock thinks about the right, back onto the left. Boyd Woodcock swings it towards the top of the goal square. South Australia in good position. Jez McLennan takes the mark. Yeah, he is an up-and-coming player who was unlucky to be coming off the Gold Coast list, Jez McLennan. So it was great. We thought he might have had an impact straight off the interchange. And we could see his, intermar his intercepting ability there on show. Quick kick from Harrison Week. 30 touches last week for North Adelaide. That one not effective, though. Hands for the Vicks. And the tackle wrapped up there by Jimmy Rowe on... Top there of Cal Brown, uh, Cal Porter actually actually come into the side late for Pinnock. Boyd wins that tap. Brew's already had four touches. The skipper made a great start to Clays. Good representation from Werribee. Good numbers from Southport as well. Two teams that have been powerhouses in the VFL over the last couple of years. Last two runners up, in fact. Harrison Wig. The South Australians get it to the outside for McLennan. Hit up target is Callow, beautiful, straight onto his chest. Lockie Young with the job on Jackson Callow, kick towards half forward. The target was Matt Allen. Low involved. This is Bain and Low, loses possession now. Porter in there, scrapping hard, he's wrapped up. Ned Log in there trying to extract it for the Vicks. Finds his boot, going back with the flight with courage was Henderson. Stumbles, loses his footing, needs some support, has some now. Dawson to the outside. Cal Brown's going to look up and see not a lot to go to inside 50. That was the one spot he really couldn't kick it. Straight to Max Proud. That courage on show there, Jace, from Jack Henderson going back with the flight. So he has the ability to work up and down the ground. So starting in that forward pocket, then coming back as the Crow leaders pushed forward. Super courageous. Exactly combining there with Bailey. Into the captain in sign all. So Joey decides to head back. So just holding on to the footy at the moment as they work their way around, maintaining possession. Jack Heard now to McLennan, who's seen a little bit of it. His kick, well, he was trying to pick out Boyd, couldn't do it. Had a couple of Victorians right in the middle of him. Going down there, losing feet was Gray. Battles out, good little handball comes to Week. Little shoot around the corner from McBean and suddenly South Australia with an opportunity to get out McClellan back and forward then chips it up towards Boyd good punch over the top from DeClays 
Yes, he gets another opportunity at it. Goes along the ground. Wig under pressure. Close to the line. Dawson comes back. And here's a chance now for Gray. Good kick. Good centering kick into the corridor. And they come through the middle. Highmore. Some run now. Brown links up with Ned Long. On the burst is Jepson. Not a great kick inside 50. Made life difficult for his forwards. Garoni tries to keep it moving for Victoria. Brew comes in over the top. And he is a tackling machine, Don Brew. He'll be in double figures this afternoon, guaranteed. That'll be pleasing the Victorian coaching staff with that drive through the middle of the ground. Long carrying the footy, just not executing that kick into attack. Right on cue, Don Brew takes down the bigger man, Harry Boyd. And the Vicks escape. This is the dangerous Sam Lawson. Hoisted high. Garoni, well done. Good defence there from South Australia. That was Max Proud. Got a finger to it and then a boot to it. And he finds Finlay on the way out. Finlay's getting another opportunity at it. Just fumbles down on hands and knees. Was Hustweight able to flick a handball out? The hot in the contest on the outer side here of the Bay Oval at the moment. Coming through for the Vicks. Hustweight again in board. Lawson gives it off and here's a chance now for the first goal for them. And it's Ned Long kick truly. So the Vicks have drawn first blood here at Glenelg Oval. Beautiful drive. Great to have you with us on 7 Plus, live streaming around the country, of course, all our 7 VFL, 7 Sandful and 7 Waffle matches of the day, live every weekend and on demand, the full back catalogue there as well. So all the best from State League footy in 2024 is yours, live and free on 7 Plus. First five inside 50s of the game of the Vicks, Rhett. Terrific drive there off the back flank from Long again. Now, you talked about how dangerous the exciting forward that Sam Lawson is. And they're linking up well. So the possession they're maintaining is very clean at the moment, Victoria. Not too many fumbles out there. On the other side of it, the South Australian defence is under the pump. Crosley will continue this battle in the middle. It's going to be fascinating all day against Harry Boyd. Steps across Crosley. Neither an effective tap. Ball hits the deck. Opportunity here for Harry Grant. Managed to slip his opponent. Bounces one towards half forward. Almost killed by Jepson. Comes in, lays a strong tackle. Porter arrives for the Vicks. Wraps it up. Ball up. Front edge of the square. That's good response from Riley Knight. Second and third effort out of the centre bounce. Proven state player. He was willing himself on that contest to push it forward and again getting beaten. Stoppage here, South Australia. Boyd's tap inside 50, but only as far as Jepson. Clever little kick from Brown. Good, solid contest. Crashing in hard there was Grant. Forces a turnover for South Australia. Mitch O'Neill off to Casey Voss. He'll drive it long towards the square. Vicks have got numbers. That's a free kick. Highmore interfered with in the marking contest by Jackson Callow. South Australia now with a couple of inside 50s after the Vicks had the first five. And the clearance count at the moment, 6-2 to two in favour of Victoria. And there's been time and space involved in those clearances as well. So talk about how important that midfield battle is. And the skipper... Brew is leading from the front. Five disposals already. Bianco out of the back pocket. Sign all in there for South Australia, just hovering over the top. So it's been a good start for the VFL. Certainly put the pressure on SA. Crossley positions himself in the front too. Nice little tap down. Able to flick it down to Woodcock who got involved. Here's a chance now coming through there is Dawson. Ah, his kick's fallen beautifully for Lawson. Handball over the top. Here's a chance now for the Vicks. Watkins running through and geez, into the open goal too. That is a crucial miss. So 1-1-7 one, one, and SA at the score. Some nerves for both teams. Jack Watson, you can see Watkins rather takes a deep breath but tugs it left. Long ball out towards the wing. Callow the target. Brings it to ground. South Australia got some numbers here. O'Neill tries to feed it through, holding the football. Free kick, Victoria. Advantage will be paid. Going back with the flight. Was proud for the Crow Eaters. Vicks pile in. The connection between the midfielders at the moment, Biggles, seems to be a little bit slicker for the Vicks. And that extra carry, Jase. So realising that they have an extra five or ten metres. Take that territory. That's a big part of this game to get it deeper on Glenelg Oval. So you don't have a shallow entry and they've adjusted well, Victoria. Crosley feeds it back. 
having a big influence early. Lawson squares it up to a dangerous spot. Off hands. Here's Zeckley, the speedster, and away he goes off half back. His run will be a feature this afternoon. And they chain up around the outer side of the ground. Luke Reynolds now takes a bounce. Can assess his options. Beautiful working of the angles there from Highmore. Read it nicely. Cut off that lead. Intelligent, good. Just look at him on the replay there. He knew he could have taken the mark. Intense football, though, at the moment. They're leading the disposal count 50 to 37, Victoria. And they seem to be cleaner with ball in hand. Tommy Highmore, prominent early, of course. Spent some time in South Adelaide before heading off to the Saints and now working his craft with Port Melbourne. Is tackle there. You're not going to get anyone out of that. Don Brewer going. Geez, you highlighted his tackling, Jase. Uh, He's already up to four tackles. Porter's had three. Doing the ruck work there for SA was Callow. And he's returned to Norwood after a stint at Hawthorne. He's been in the weights room down at Hawthorne too. He's come back, I reckon, five, six kilos bigger than he was when he left the Tasmanian. Yeah, that was certainly part of his uh, process at Hawthorne. He spent lots of time bulking up. Making his debut for South Australia this afternoon. Talented youngster. Tackled when not in possession. Free kick Riley Knight. Goes against George Gray. So can South Australia get a meaningful entry inside 50? Knight towards the pocket. Couple to beat there for Nathan Cooper. Did well. Came over the top with a fist. Ball not really to the advantage of the South Australian forwards at the moment. Cooper's spoil was tremendous. Knight looking to roll around after that free kick and just get it in there with some speed. If they can get some one-on-ones, we know how dangerous the forward line is for SA. So Dixon, the relief ruckman for Victoria against McBean. Brown got a handball. Socket off the deck outside 50. Coming in with a tackle was Mitch White, former Melbourne player. Tenth year in the system. Great captain of the Casey Demons. Provide plenty of leadership this afternoon. Some trouble here for Rourke Smith. He's taken down in a good tackle. Great pressure from Zekali. Advantage was paid. Handball popped over the top. Siner, the skipper, goes towards his big forward, Callow. It's punched away. Highmore couldn't control it on the deck. He's got some support. It's Porter. Throws it on the boot and hoists it high outside 50. Long comes over the top. Mitch White, rather, over the top and gets it to the line. Yeah, Callow not really getting a good look at it at the moment. So looking at the stoppage in isolation, it's pretty much one-on-one. So no really anyone sitting off to allow that easy exit. So far the intensity of this match in the first term is right up on the level. So Dixon v Finlay and Finlay of course spent most of his time in defence for North Adelaide and this year they've switched him forward so he was pretty good last week in that role against Central District which helped confirm his spot in this side. Up against Dixon who's got himself in front again there and that's high so free kick is going to go the way of Riley Knight. Just recently married the other day. Had Mitch Grigg emceeing his wedding, of course. A couple of Norwood and former Crows buddies there. And that kick there... You didn't get the kick, Soda? No, I didn't. No, not at all. Happy to steer clear with those boys. They're uh, too young and uh, stamina's too good at their age to get through that. And the free kick, though, has been plucked out. It's going to go to Lockie Hosey. And he has an opportunity to get the first one for South Australia coming off five against Port Adelaide last week in the opening round. Young was a little nervous just grab Hosey then because he can attack the ball in the air. So the Tiger Premiership star no problems at all. Puts that one through and it's a big by a point here. 13 gone in the first term at Glenelg Oval. Red hot contest here at Glenelg Oval. Hosey getting on the scoreboard early. The truck assist replay showing the free kick where he was infringed. So one point margin to Victoria. And we've got to look for these dangerous one-on-ones. But been yet to have a look at it. It's got a pretty good matchup height-wise as well down there with Cooper. It was best on ground in there. Three-point win over the Sharks. It's, it's a great matchup. Good response from South Australia. They had the first five inside 50s. It's now six apiece. And they win that clearance, but it's going to come back. Hal Brown takes the grab. He'll go short. This is Jacob Dawson, who's been a ball-winning machine in the VFL in recent seasons. Jepson off half-back, goes inside 50, bouncing football for the dangerous Lawson. Back onto his right side, brings it inboard for long. Gutsy effort there from Luke Reynolds. 
saves a shot at goal. Dawson tries to bust through a tackle. He's taken down. Lawson goes again. He's wrapped up. 35 out from the Victorian goal free kick. Too high. Victoria will have it. And it's going back to Sam Lawson. He's been electric in this first term, so very unlucky there that there wasn't a free kick paid high. Going back in and again, Lawson, who's started this game on fire with five disposals, predominantly in the front half as well. He was sporting the dreadlocks when he was playing here with uh, Woodville West Torrens in that premiership back in 2020. Different looking player, but geez, he's uh, been very effective so far, Jason. He was so close to getting on, that, getting on an AFL list a couple of years ago. Injury denied him that opportunity. He launches it long. And it floats just across the face for another minor score. So just getting a moment here, South Australia, to, to try and take the sting out of the game. The red hot start from Victoria maintaining possession and using the ball better efficiently efficiently as well. 72% disposal efficiency to the Vicks. Lawson, Jepson, Brew, Brown, all with six touches so far as Victoria dominates possession 60 to 48. Here's Bain and Lowe, Norwood Premiership player. Another Tasmanian here in defence going up to the outer side. Quick handball was effective. Kel Brown getting involved. Oh, that's nice work there. It's about to bounce in the way of Woodcock. And he now has some support from Kel Brown, who's now at the seven touches. Josh Ryan couldn't hold on to it. Flicks it backwards to Hurd. Little wobbler along the ground, only as far as the clays. And just as George Gray was about to do some work there, the ball's going to be called back. Out of bounds in the pocket here at the bay in front of the cricket club. That's a good bound round pie call. Won't have to get him in the AFL system. These forward pockets at the moment have really been a Bermuda Triangle with some of the calls and gather around early days in the AFL and SANFL. Dixon pushes in the back in the ruck contest. No advantage, so it will come back for South Australia. who have stabilised the situation really well. Here's another look. Really excited to see Dixon today. He, he can do anything. He's infringing, infringing here, but just his presence and what he brings to this footy club of this side his ability in the air his strength his aggression i love watching him play 21 year old from the kingsborough tigers in tasmania spent some time on Fremantle's list played an afl game and then was a west coast ssp as well this is zekali electrifying speed on show this afternoon it's been victoria that have linked up the better off halfback with some run and carry in the early stages. Oh, and that kick from Zekali is high, wide, and not so handsome. Now, this may be perceived pressure, but we've seen some fundamental errors coming out of the back half of South Australia. And that's a credit to Victoria. Now switched on they are early. Great to have you with us on 7 Plus. Sandful, VFL, and Waffle every week, live and free around the country. Ned Long runs to 52, drives towards the pocket, pitches just inside the line, and Lowson watches it bounce out. So a goal apiece. We've played 18 minutes at Glenelg. In fact, cleared the line, so it's a free kick to South Australia, and Wig can find a target at defensive 50. He's got the McGarry medalist, Harry Grant, here in defensive 50. Victoria set up well behind the ball. There's Grant. Mark couldn't be taken there, just trying to get a hand in. It was Boyd. And bobbles up. Rowe intercepted by Hayes. Good work there by Dixon as well. Nice little give here. It ends up with Henderson and the base. And now going inboard. Oh, the mark taken by her and the kick. Bianco just a little errant there. So South Australia saved by the Norwood defender. So the Vicks throwing it around by hand. Biggles 47-25. The handball count at the moment to get themselves out of trouble. But the connection inside 50 letting them down. I think it's good. The ball on the body handball at the moment is particularly the forward handle to keep the play moving is fine. They won't have any qualms about that. South Australia to get out the back. Delivery clears Finlay. Vicks have got numbers here. Finlay comes again, lays a tackle. Might have slipped high on Nathan Cooper. It did. 26-year-old originally through the Sydney Swans Academy. Pennon Hills and Sydney Uni these days plays his footy at Werribee. Cal Brown now to eight disposals. Jepson has seven for Victoria. Just McLennan has been a stalwart across half back. He has seven touches, and Harrison Wig, as he always does, accumulating six. Yeah, 
It's all the halfbacks at the moment racking up the big numbers. The game's being played largely between the arcs. Highmore has to go back to the outer side. Needs a target to present. Bit too much on that kick. It might work for the Vicks at the back because here they go again linking through the middle of the ground. Mitch White's kick is tidy. Turning to have a bit of a look behind there was Watkins. Gives it off. Delivery inside 50. Here's an opportunity at the back. Brew. Bianco. And the Vicks get their second. Some beautiful run, carry and drive. That is a great spot to sit by Brew, who's just been everywhere on the truck assist replay. His work rate here to not only around stoppage, but then to get to the feet. So they're working in numbers. Magic finish from Bianco, two around the corner. Trent Bianco, 23 games for Collingwood at AFL level over the last four seasons this year, playing at Footscray in the VFL. Crosley wins the tap. Knight taken down. Storming through off the back half of the square was McLennan, did well. Handball missed its target. Bianco whisks it away. Off to DeClays. He goes towards the pocket. Here's Dixon trying to turn Ryan. Right now, Biggles, it feels like if they can get that last piece, that connection piece, the Vicks look real dangerous. They do. And Bianco, again, having an impact. He was in their best in uh, Footscray's win over the Demons. The mid-season draft for him is a genuine possibility with so many recruiters here. He'll be throwing his name up again. High ball from Ryan. Three kick, though, has been plucked out, so it's going to go to Crosley. It'll give to Cal Brown, who's had a pretty impressive first turn. Dixon at front, couldn't take it. Ryan at the back. On to it again was Dixon, had a little crack. Here's a kick from Bianco. Goes high ball again after opening jump. That is a great hang. Absolute cracker by Rolf Smith. We saw him drop a sitter through his hands on the outer wing before, but when it comes to standing up, have a look at this. Nice little take over the top there. Beautiful work over Harrison Week. Early highlight. Of course, we all know him from the AFL Grand Final three years ago. Started the interchange this afternoon, launching at that one. Brilliant contested mark. So Smith, pretty much point blank, 45 degree angle, steers it through, and the Vicks have got three goals. They're out to an early lead by 14 points. Well, the Victorians winning it on the inside and then spreading to the outside effectively. Biggles, 12-5 clearances. Ground ball gets 26-15. So that's when the ball's in dispute on the deck. The Vicks are winning almost 2-1. to one. And winning in the air. What a hang as well. And the truck assist replay giving us a sensational look at Rourke Smith's aerial antics. And South Australia start winning some contests. Night wrapped up. When they do get their hands on the football, the Vicks have done a good job of blocking the exit and then winning it themselves. There's another example. Dawson. Drives inside 50, kick not to the advantage of Lawson. It was nicely read by Casey Voss and this South Australian defence with some more work to do. Last eight inside 50s all going the way of Victoria. Beautiful fly over the top, couldn't complete the mark. Luke Reynolds has support on the deck. Kick towards half forward, ricochets off that contest. Out of bounds on the fall, it'll be a South Australian ball. This is Reynolds, spent a year at Carlton back in 2014. Kick inside 50 clears the contest and Lockie Young, who's with Carlton now in the VFL program, switches play to Boyd Woodcock. Matthew Allen's the one South Australian need to get in the game. He can destroy a game. We've seen here on the King's birthday massacre playing for Glenelg where it was one of the best individual performances you'll see. He's just had the one disposal so far. His teammate Hosey looked for him. They need to get him the ball around that 50 to 70 metre arc. Thumping kick from Ned Long. Dixon was the target. South Australia with numbers on the deck. Ball bounces back towards half forward. And we're seeing the flexibility of a player like Ned Long. He's a 194 centimetre big bodied midfielder. But in that occasion, he was the hit up man. And he is carrying the lines as well. But they're outworking South Australia at the moment, Victoria. You're seeing defenders push up the ground, midfielding, midfielders getting back to help out the defenders. And they are really working overtime to make sure that. They possess the ball, but also help out their teammate. So last touch rule being played here this afternoon. If you're wondering, there's been a few that haven't been out of bounds on the full, but a free kick paid in, th in this occasion. No effective disposal. It's spilled out over the line off hands. So it looks to be last touch. News to us. We'll just work it out as we go along. Good tackle pressure again, this time on Mitch O'Neill. Forces a turnover for Victoria. Quick hands there from Campbell Husswaite. Ball came back to him, and then he turns tackler on 
Harry Grant. So approaching the 26 minute mark of the opening term, it's Victoria by 14 points. And leadership on ground for South Australia has to stand up here. Riley Knight's one of those, Harrison Weed with his hands on the footy and there's sign or on cue. These are the guys that are going to have to sense that this quarter they need to just get one going into the quarter time break. So it's Ned Long that opened the scoring in the first five minutes with a goal. Hosey bounced up, but since then it's been a one-way traffic for the Vicks. Bianco obviously saw moments ago Rourke Smith's great take. As Boyd and Crossley reacquaint themselves, free kick this time is going to go to Harry Boyd, the former Shepherd and Bear, who's doing some wonderful work with Norwood, and obviously his coach Jade Rawlins in charge today. That is a great set of hands coming across nicely with Luke Reynolds. And when you have a Glenelg forward line generally here that has Reynolds, Hosey and McBean, no wonder they are such a potent team in this competition at Central level. And that brought this big crowd to the feet as well. They really leapt up at that. His attack on the footy in the air has a beautiful set of hands on him, Hosey. So Reynolds from 49, a high ball over to the left and just lets it drift out. So not taking their opportunities. First blight in the scoreboard for Sandful and... That inside 50 count, Jason, has just really swung Victoria's way, 14-8. Yeah, Vix had the first five, then South Australia had six of the next seven before the Vix got on top late in that term. It is quarter time at Glenelg Oval. State footy. It's the Vix by 13 points. The BFL 3-2-20. The Sandful 1-1-7. Seven's coverage is brought to you by Truck Assist. Hard-working truck insurance built for tradies. Seven's coverage is brought to you by Crown. Here's where things get interesting. Spectacular day in beautiful Adelaide as Gather Round rolls on. All eyes on Glenelg Oval. The Fix getting away to a flying start at the first five inside 50s. They were winning it on the inside, getting it out to the, out to the outside and then using it effectively. They were working well through the middle, chaining up by hand. They managed to kick three goals to one in that opening term. Victoria, 3-2-20. South Australia, 1-1-7. Cal Brown, Ben Jepson, dominant off half back. Ned Long working hard for seven touches while Jez McLennan has had plenty of work to do down back for the South Australians. Rhett Biglins, as we take a look at the numbers, Victoria plus 28 for disposals, 19 of those uncontested. And then you look at those clearance numbers. Yeah, Victoria have owned contested footy, haven't they? They've been in and under, and uh, <coughs> that's been a result of their clearance. Well, mistakes have been super costly for South Australia. The three goals the Victoria kick have all originated from turnover. And... Um, Rourke Smith's only touch in that game was a highlight as well, the way in which he launched at it. So they've got to tidy up the heat around the footy, South Australia. And that's where the contested position, that's where it's going to start. And that's how they can get a hold of it. You mentioned Rourke Smith came up with one of the highlights of the opening term, the former Western Bulldog these days at Port Melbourne. The 27-year-old's been around the system for a while and he's capable of things like this. Great effort to be able to fly that and there have been multiple entries this is where South Australia has been under siege in their back half multiple repeat entries into attacking 50 for the big V and their forwards have just fed off a terrific run through the mid and half back Brown with 10 disposals as you mentioned has been sensational with his carry he's also gathered a couple of clearances and a few contested possessions healthy crowd in on a beautiful day great conditions second quarter action thanks to Crown it's the Vix by 13 points here's Mark Soderstrom Harry Boyd, Braden Crossley, the big balls going at it in the centre of the ground. Crossley again gets that little tap down into the direction of Hustweight. And we've seen Don Brew, you, you said he's getting up with double figures tackles. Well, he's just about there. He's got six already, Jay, so he's been outstanding to captain, leading from the front, doing a lot of the grunt work in the middle there as Boyd able to get the ball and somehow flicks it out as he was being held on there by Hustweight. And Brew again, so what's he up to seven? All right, we'll see, we'll get him up to ten, I reckon, five minutes into this second term by then. Boyd swings the arm around, quick little kick comes out from Allen, and we heard Red Bigland say you need to get Allen into the game. In defence, combining nicely was Porter, and suddenly they're going to 
pull out a free kick here, so it's going to go the way of Hust Waite. Good crowd on the outer side. There is so much on the line here, as there always is in the state game. South Australia versus Victoria, Port Adelaide and Fremantle have been talking and questioning the strength of the leagues and what's better for their development. So the best league outside of the AFL is the breaking rights, the big prize today. The bases kick up to half forward. Scooting around was Henderson and that little handball over the top to him and the blind one out of bounds. It'll be last possession out of bounds, so opportunity for SA to bring the ball back in. Smacks proud. Launches it from defensive 50. Cooper again, beautiful spoil over the top. Brew to the outside. De Clays has got some support. He's corralled off to Brown. Pops a handball. Dawson bounces it to Henderson. Back to Cal Brown. Now looks inside 50 towards the pocket. It's a two on two. Dixon over the top. Couldn't quite bring it down. South Australian defence under some pressure. Bundled out by Nick Hayes. Well known to South Australian fans, of course. Soda, great history here in the SANFL. Yeah, premiership player at Woodville West Torrens. Brother Jack obviously had a nice work with the Saints before he had that terrible knee injury as well. Came back last week playing for Sandy, so it's great to see him back. Yeah, the Hayes brothers were absolutely terrific here for Woodville West Torrens. It'll kick around the corner from Dawson into the open 50 area. Body work there was good to Dixon now. Kick around the corner and just sneaks it in for a behind. And that's great news to know that Jack Hayes is back up and about moving. Oh, he's had such a rotten run. That Garoni bottle work, body work was terrific, wasn't it? Jack Hurd's just needing to adjust. Still a young player, Hurd, but Garoni's ability to get him off the footy. Crosley got down low. Dawson, likewise, he's wrapped up. Umpire waits on it and will penalise for holding the football. A little stagnant here, South Australia. So they're going to win the footy from a turnover. So good pressure here. Good reward, but then they're held up so often in this match. We've seen them long down the line. Casey Boss goes long to the wing, and it's punched away by Tom Highmore. Big Swife, 14 points, early going second term of the state game. Stratorama Oval here at Glenelg. And with this really good blend of all stars, of course, Victorians playing for South Australia, the likes of McBean and Boyd and Crowley is playing for the Big V with a point to prove. Woodcock and, and Hayes, so much talent on show. Grant wins the stoppage this time for the Crow Eaters towards half forward, a holding decision. It's going the way of Victoria, an advantage to be paid. Kel Brown scoots away. He's been damaging. De Clays has to stand and wait. He's going to get wrapped up by Jez McLennan, who's been one of South Australia's best and busiest. And the turnover comes. Voss, low and flat towards the pocket, bouncing football. Cooper keeps it alive. And away come the Vicks. They spread towards the grandstand side. That's a beautifully weighted kick, and Rob Smith doesn't have to break stride. And nice work by foot by Lockie Young. Smith to the wing. Oh, Dixon was the target, almost just went through the hands. Free kick's going to go to... South Australia, play on advantage. Harry Grant's kick is a good one, and the mark's been taken by Hosey. Inside 50, 40 out, in fact, directly in front. Even though it was on the back of a free kick, they lined up through the corridor, and they've been wide at times, simple handball. Victoria had worked so hard just to try and get out of their defence. That's a nice spot up from the McGeary Millers to Harry Grant. Lakes out. He's now had nine disposals, so working his way nicely into this match. Yeah, wouldn't expect Lockie Hayes to miss from there, so he's got his second in South Australia. Sneak a little closer. And the deliberate kicking style keeping South Australia in this match from Lockie Hayes as he leans on in the crown replay, giving us a great look at how he leans on that footy. Harry Grant's execution, the goal assist is spot on the money. Marching back to eight points. Good start to the second term for South Australia. Crosley and Boyd lock up again. Crosley just works him. Holds in the process. Boyd will take the free kick. Wanted to give off the handball to Grant. And launches it himself. Inside 50 again. Young came over the top. Gray at the back. Works with Porter. He shares with Brown. And now Highmore. Waiting for an option, nothing really presenting, so he'll just chip it high. Lawson's going to have to come over the top. What well on McLennan, who's been fantastic. Kicks to a dangerous spot. It might work out here for the Vicks. 
Turnover comes and they're away. Bianco gives it over the top to Long. He'll look up. Not a lot to go to. Working really hard to get back there is Lawson. Can he keep it alive inside the line? He can. He'll take the big man Ryan on. Feeds back the handball. South Australia get back in number, so Victoria retain possession to DeClays. Looks for a little hole and finds Long, who is within range from 50. That was brilliant from Long. His composure with his first kick inside attacking 50. He, they were well and truly outnumbered. It was 3-1. to one. He still put the ball to the advantage side of Lawson, who keeps it in play. And then Long pops up for a second effort in the same play with a shot on goal. Outstanding. Take a good kick. The man on the mark stands right on 50, but absolutely no breeze to speak to at all here at Glenelg. So Ned Long has already kicked one. We've spoken about his versatility as a big-bodied mid. Arcs out to the right. Tries to keep it low and flat. It won't get there. It's off hands. Out of bounds. Throw in adjacent to the behind post. The Vicks by eight points. Perhaps a little more match hardened, Jason Soda. Two rounds in for the VFL. Just the one round in for South Australia. So they have definitely been cleaner with ball in hand. Boyd in front. Able to bring it down. Mitch O'Neill trying to get involved there for South Australia. And the whistle... Goes advantage of South Australia, so O'Neill has it in board. Little one in there to Harry Week. He's going to get moving on that left foot as quickly as he can. Just traverses right across the ground to his North Adelaide teammate and Frankie Zeckley. He was pretty dynamic last week against the Dogs in the opening round. He goes into the middle of the ground and good work there. Came from Riley Knight. Zeckley again gets onto it and lowers the eyes. Mark couldn't be taken there by Carl Finlay. was in a good position. And he's going to get the free kick. So that's against Tommy Highmore, who's had a pretty good start, Highmore. Finlay, the young rooster. High ball. Kello stretched out to get the hands to it in front of Hosey. And that's a pretty good one too as well there. Kello Hosey and Jackson has got the mark and an opportunity now to get the third. This will be really good for Callow's confidence because he's had hands on a few balls already in, in this match and just spilt them. So he clunks one here, highest point, brings it to ground. A little deep, the kick from Finlay, but a gettable shot here to this northeastern end. North Launceston product has spent some time at Hawthorne, back at Norwood, and he's kicked, though, no, he's just left it skinny. Cal Brown now up to 16 disposals for Victoria. The Clays has 12. Just McLennan has looked really composed when he's had the footy in his hands. 11 touches, mainly using it via foot. And giving some rebound and run off half back. Cal Brown goes towards Crosley. Up in front. Good juggling effort from the big man. Wants to keep it moving. Handball wasn't perfect for Woodcock, but he made it good. Out on the lead towards Garoni. Brown. Long. Garoni. Towards half forward. Some body work there. Umpire said illegal against Jack Watkins. The free kick will come back to Casey Voss. He's been resolute across half back. To Proud. And they look to switch to the outer side. McLennan involved again. Looking for an option. He'll bring it back into the middle. This is Josh Ryan. Now Matt Allen. Fix set up well down the ground, but that's a really good kick. He's got it over the top of the clays and found Hosey. Now the important one inside 50. Decides he's just going to hoist it high. The South Australians got good representation. Front and centre was Dom Brew. But he'll give it straight back to the South Australians. A slight fumble there from Allen. In fact, it was heard rather. McLennan brings it inside. Free kick will be paid to Voss. Was collected in the marking contest against Jack Watkins. Numbers of ground level, Victoria. So that last ball inside forward 50. It comes to ground with a high kick, but there were more numbers at ground level. Victoria working hard, and Brew is leading from the front there. Darcy Bailey inside 50. A fly from Finlay. Kello tries to find it on the ground. Busting through Finlay. Can't muscle his way through the Victorian defence. And it does look, there's been a few times today, this is a north-south running ground. Players looking up towards that northern end of the ground have had easy marks that just go straight through their hands looking straight into the sun. 
It's caused a little bit of grief, and this little kick around the corner is a good one. Pinch out of the pack. It's a goal, and it's nice work by Hosey. He has got all three for South Australia to Glenelg Star. McBean is so clever on the crown replay with his ruck work. He's a genuine forward who has some ruck craft now. Puts it down to his teammate, Hosey, with a one-step kick. That is a brilliant snap around the corner. And we've got a one-point ball game. Inside 56-2 in the second term, South Australia. The Vicks maybe just overusing the ball by hand. South Australia playing more direct in the second term. They've got it back within a point. Free kick going the way of Victoria. Advantage be paid as Woodcock streams away. Delivers inside 50. Mitch White there. Garoni as well. Ryan keeps it alive. Working on the boundary line. It's stepped over. By Proud. Throw in inside 50 for the Vicks. Is Biggles, uh, Lockie Hosey, you look at his last two and a half games of football, six goals in the grand final, five goals in round one, and he's kicked three before half time here. Yeah, and he's just, he does it without breaking his sweat at times, doesn't he? Even though we don't see his off the ball work, for me it's not only, oh, he, of course he works hard, but talents and football smarts, he's got bags of those. Lawson pleads his case, but holding the ball paid. This is Harry Wig. Short to Zeckley. South Australia controlling the game in this second term. Riley Knight has it inside defensive 50. That's a good pick up, Jase. Controlling the game. Halfbacks much more in control. Callow providing a really good option as well. Starting to connect. The line's much better, South Australia, in this second quarter. That kick not exactly where he intended, but it's going to work well for Hosey, who is white hot. He'll turn and go direct towards the square. Options here for South Australia. It gets over the back. McBean a flying shot. He's good. And South Australia in front. Have a look at Callow here. Destroy this footy. Highest point on the crown replay. That is a beautiful contested mark. So they get a bit of a chaos ball in there. And then McBean, who is well over two metres tall, brings it to ground himself. Turns on a dime. Magic finish. Three big forwards for South Australia. Callow. Hosey, McBean, all getting involved and she's got strong mitts. Callow. So Finlay's up in the ruck work with Dixon. Quick kick came out from Woodcock who's been bobbing around prominent. Bailey can't quite trap Watkins and going forward, that's a nice little kick too. So here's an opportunity now for Lawson who we've seen plenty of him throughout the day. He's started nicely and it's Cal Brown and DeClay started to rack up a lot of the footy just didn't see Lawson for a little bit but his sort of first half of the game was great where he set the scene for Victoria and he's been a real spark hasn't he up and down the ground knows these South Australian ovals well so Sammy Lawson will go from 52 not quite sure it's from 50 from this Glenelg oval too but little snap over the top was Finlay I think Jay stay put the 50 mark in a little bit just to make the Bay Oval look bigger. Always happens. It is 7 metres shorter and 9 metres narrower than the Adelaide Oval. Not quite as narrow as Norwood. We we'll tried to debate this with Jace pre-game and he's, he's ripped out the actual numbers as a player. This feels as big as Adelaide Oval but he was spot on the money. Slightly shorter. Free kick. Victorian starting to get a little frustrated in this second term. Voss Bounces it forward. Lovely pick up by Brown. That's his 19th touch, Kel Brown. Long's had some good movements. That's not one of them. McLennan been everywhere. Handball goes. Snelling a bit of work to do, but he's got some support to the outside. Wig. South Australia really getting things up and rolling right now. It's the Vicks that need to respond here. They need to change the momentum of the game. Grant will go towards their tall targets again. Big fly is a magnificent grab. It's Lockie Hosey again. In fact, it's Luke Reynolds, my apologies. Another of these big key forwards for South Australia. Luke Reynolds, the 29-year-old, originally from North Haven and Port Adelaide Magpies, a year at Carlton. Back to Port. He's been at Glenelg the last six or seven seasons. And the Crowhead is a rolling at Glenelg. Oh, what a hand. What a grab. Crown replay. Reynolds at his best. That is his feature. 
contested marking up and then look at that sky high and then more importantly finishes the goal back to back premiership player for the bays apologies that luca totally destroyed his highlight <laughs> lucky hosey will be happy with that absolutely good runner too luke all five goals coming from glenelg players we talked about their three big key forwards hosey mcbean reynolds and no wonder they've been such a dominant side the glenelg footy club the reigning premier when you've got the forward line that is full of those three boys tackle and then won't get through the arms of ned long so Brett, what does victoria now need to do they had the game on their terms and it's clearly now south australia's I think that ball that's flipping out of, out of the stoppage, so we see it here again, they're just overrunning a couple of them. If they can clean that up there, then they can get a, take a bit of speed out of this game, but again, another turnover is going to hurt them. Opportunity now, Harry Grant comes out, beautiful kick. Callow couldn't quite hold on to it. A chance for Victoria's defence to mop up, a free kick is going to go against Callow. So a couple little mistakes there from the Tasmanian and Tommy Highmore. And the umpire is... Blood rule. Going to get the blood rule, so I think that's uh, is that Bain and Light? No, it's going to be Tommy Highmore. Yep. So he's going to come and get patched up, and the ball will be with Victoria at centre half back. Great point you made about those spillages in the first term. The Vicks were swooping on it and linking up by hand. Rhett, that's just not happening in the second quarter. Yeah, they've cleaned up their their ball use. South Australia. There haven't been too many fumbles in this second term. First term, they were possibly a little nervous. Beautiful work from Henderson. Off sign up. Inside 50 and Callow turns around to Harry Boyd and says no. It's don't, mine. Don't you love that? Two big roosters. One out. 30 out from goal. Like a cage title fight. Just send them in there and let them fight out. And after the strong grab, not only did he clunk it so well versus Boyd, he's then just given one back to him. Jason, I was trying to work out who he reminded me of, the look here, Braden Cross. I don't know if you remember uh, Robbie Bones McGee yes. back in Footscray, Richmond, South yep. Melbourne. Very Bones McGee. Big bit handlebar of, moustache. A little bit of chopper read. And a little bit of John Coleman as Braden Crosley pops it through. Critical goal for the Vicks as we enter time on in the second term. Braden Crosley resting forward. The big shark. Have a look at him. <laughs> oh, loving the Victoria Gansey. It was a V for Victoria to the crowd and pumping his chest. Let's have a look at this centre bounce. These two should really butt heads again. And Crosley had a piece of Boyd's arm. Free kick. Advantage won't be paid. Braden saying, hey, you had a hold of my jumper as well. Off the back of the square comes Darcy Bailey. Good penetration on the kick. And again, it's the South Australian big forwards. It's Liam McBean. And this is a real problem for Victoria. If they can get the supply this afternoon, the Vicks struggling. There's Zane Littlejohn and his brains trust. Ben Hudson trying to work out how do you negate the sort of talent and firepower that the SANFL have inside 50. I don't think Hutto was too pleased with that ruck infringement. I don't think it was there either. Crosley and Boyd clashing, and then all of a sudden you get a free kick. The umpires pull out of it. But uh, sends it quickly in there, Boyd. So Liam McBain. Bailey combining. Such an accomplished goal kicker. Won the Frosty Miller medal as the leading goal kicker in the VFL in 2015. Then three straight Ken Farmer medals in the Sandfall. Been a wonderful state league player for a very long time, but he's hung that one way, way right. Did Remains you a four point game. You talked him up beautifully, too, Jase. You can almost mark that in your. Footy record, footy budget, whatever you like here. If we gather around today, he normally drills those. He doesn't normally have me on his back. <laughs> so keep all winners for both sides. Brown getting a stack of it for Victoria. 18 disposals to Clay says 12. Jess McLennan and Harry Grant, 13 and 12 apiece. So Crosley, front position is Boyd. A little reach over. As coming out of defence was Husswaite. Now Jepson. Up to half forward. Bang! Oh, that is a great collect. Nicely done there by Rob Smith. Gives it off, and here is a charge for a goal. As a beautiful finish by Hugh Dixon, the big man on his left. Play of the day so far, Rhett Biglands. I love that from Rob Smith. That could have almost been 
an absolute train wreck. The crown replay, both players at it full tilt. And Smith Gathers sets up with the goal assist to Dixon. And Dixon is a huge man, but finishes really well on the move. And the Vicks are back in front. They've responded well. Boy, just belts it forward. Another free kick. It's time for a hold. It's going the other way to Victoria this time. Some confusion in the middle. Crosley gets one back. George Gray off the back edge of the square. Delivers it inside 50. Dixon sets himself. Spills to the front for Henderson. Rourke Smith having an impact. Onto his left boot. Tries the touch kick towards Lawson. Off hands taken by Brew. Flying left foot shot. Two in the goal square. Garoni there. Play on the call. Woodcock tries to get it to Dawson. Signer in there working. Flip backwards by McLennan. Good poise and composure. Bailey. Goes long. Porter sits underneath this one. Takes it on his chest. Brilliant mark. Pressure is on here. Inside 50. It's knocked away from Dawson. At ground level. South Australia under some pressure. Ball fed through towards the Clace. Goes to the voice of Henderson. Steps a man. Swings a goal with good tackle pressure there. Desperate effort from Riley Knight. Saves the day for South Australia. That's one thing, one area I feel that South Australia has certainly improved. They are not giving their forwards that extra metre or two. They're shutting down their time and space, and that's putting a lot of pressure on every shot at goal for Lines Victoria. tonight. It'll get over the back here for Reynolds. Below the knee, free kick, going the way of the Vicks. Below the knee? No, it's going to go the other way. Yeah, for in danger. Oh, interesting. Braden Crosley's... His father won a few flags up at Southport, didn't he? Well-known name up there. He did, indeed. Yep, Troy. Two flags in the Hall of Fame. Lawson. Dixon. So the umpire in that last one made the, the motion of below the knee, but what he was actually trying to say is it was a kick. A kick in danger to Crosley. So perhaps a slight breeze going to the left of your screen. It's been, certainly been the scoring end in the first half of this encounter. Crossley tries to get it down to Brew. Here's Smith. Dawson. Bends it inside 50. It was touched off the boot. Dixon. Picked off by Darcy Bailey. Gets through the hands of Jepson. Now an opportunity for South Australia through Jimmy Rowe. He's got numbers forward of the football. Kello hangs onto the mark. Keeps the handball moving towards Grant. He's going to be run down. Tackled by Porter. Kello left it behind. Time to try and pick it up. Well done, Porter. Scraps against the numbers. Well played, Cal Porter. Good 50-50 win from him. Really good. It was an emergency coming into this match. And not only the first tackle, the second effort not to infringe was the important part. So that concentration to stay in the play. Boyd, lovely tap. Down into the path of Matthew Allen. High kick towards 50, not 15, said the umpire. Immediate tackle will, will result the ball up as things start to get a little heated here between Rowe and Porter. And Porter will get the free kick. A bit of frustration creeping into Jimmy Rowe's game. Just the three disposals. Had one of those only moments ago. The Vicks were concerned with him going into this match, so he needs to find it. Porter's kick towards the wing. A falcon there for Bailey. Brew nowhere to go. Ball spills out. Ricochet to Grant. Trying to bust through there. It was Wig. Free kick South Australia for a hold. It's coming back to Harry Grant, the McGarry medalist. Five best on grounds to come storming home and win it. In the final five rounds of last season, off the hands of Crosley, Porter taken down. you win another free kick. Yeah, just going to need to try and take the sting out of it here. Again, Callum Porter standing up. Dying so if they switch and just possess the footy as we close in on half time. Dying stages of this second term. Victoria with their noses back in front. It's been a great second quarter from South Australia. Lockie Young towards the wing. Good body work there, McLennan. Really strong work. Nick Hayes underneath it. Delivers it back inside once again. It'll get over the back of the contest. Young tried to flip it to advantage, but was picked off by Kello. Taken by Boyd. He has a flying shot at goal. Hosey goes back and infringes. Free kick Tom Highmore. If Hosey could just needed to turn and try and bring the ball to ground. That free kick was there. Kel Brown, 19th touch. Leads the game at half time and his side do as well. It's Victoria 5 4 34, leading South Australia 5 2 32. It was the Vicks by 13 points at quarter time. South Australia flew out of the blocks in the second term, kicked the first four goals of the quarter. 
before a couple late to Victoria in time on give them the lead again. Two points to the VFL at the major break. And yeah, they won the possession, the contested possession count in that second term. That's a big positive because they were getting beat to that source clearly in the first term. Stack a ball inside forward 50 as well, 12 to 9 in favour of the Crow Eaters. So and that's where their forward line really started to get motoring. They got a few more opportunities and looked dangerous with their movement in and out of each other's space. They gel so well. If they can then get the smaller hybrid forwards for South Australia involved, that'll hit the scoreboard. But it's been a terrific contest so far. Victorian front by two points. So Cal Brown, as I mentioned, leads the game with 19 possessions. Here he is with Soda. Cal, great contest, of course. Uh, you got the jump, and then as they started to work their way in front, you guys have weathered the storm? Yeah, yeah. Well, we knew they'd come hard. Um, they're a tough team, and they're, they're a proud you know, state. So, um, yeah, we expect them to come back. What's the intensity like playing at this level now? It's great, yeah. It's good fun. You get to play against the best of the best. It's um, an awesome experience, and, yeah, it's been a great start. All right, how are the teammates going? Are you comfortable with where they're sitting at the moment? Yeah, I mean, we've only had one training session together, so it's <laughs> tough. I mean, you're still trying to work at everyone's name. Um, but, no, nah, they've been good. they been pretty connected, so it's been a good start. Well done, mate. Going along nicely. Great first half. Good luck in the second. Cheers. Thanks. Front row seats and front row eats. Yes, please. Head to where it's all served under one roof. All the fun you can have, and it's happening at Crown. Seven's coverage is brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. Save more money every year with discounted prescriptions in every store every day. Uh, welcome back to the magnificent Bay Oval here. It is in great condition. As gather around, there is a beautiful buzz about football in this town. Join me as chairman of selectors of the Vicks, former Casey captain. We can call you former Collingwood captain too, can't we, Nigel? Is that at some point? Rotation policy. Nice to see you, mate. Are you getting a word in upstairs? Yeah, we're going well. Having a bit of fun here. Nigel Carmody, of course. Now, Nigel, you've been responsible for putting this side together with Zane. You're happy with what you're seeing so far? Cause it's been a great contest. It's been a terrific contest, and I think it's a, a great showcase of both competitions competitions and the, the talent within wasn't surprising that SA were able to stamp their authority in the game in the early part of the second quarter and I think the, the VFL boys would be pretty happy with perhaps how those last sort of five or ten minutes went. Great start though too by your boys and uh, you just started to sway the momentum but you're right those big forwards for South Australia the three Glenelg boys were pretty prominent you just got to try and shut them out of it. Yeah they were obviously a bit of a headache coming in given they've played so well at Sandful level and they're playing on their home ground they're so well connected to understand the space they've got to use together but I suppose defensive systems in modern footy a little bit different to our day and age where it was a lot of one-on-one -on -one. it's perhaps more about how your, your defensive system's got to function and what's happening ahead of the ball as well and I think for the most part our guys have done well but there was always going to be a chance that Hosey and McBean and guys like that were going to get a look at some stage. No, it's very quickly though of course uh, you're normally up in the commentary box with Seven doing all the VFL games. You're back in, well not club land but representative land. Uh, how are you finding it? Yeah, it's a privilege to be involved and I'm sure it's a similar story for Jade and all the guys that are part of the, the Sample setup. As a commentator you get a chance to have a helicopter view of the competition so I suppose without having any club ties that's what I've hopefully brought to the process. Nigel, well done so far of course as chairman of selectors the result is on your head, so best of luck in the second half. They might not let you back in if the things don't turn out okay. Thanks, mate. Well done, buddy. Thanks to Nudge. Are you getting a word in? How's that for a cheeky little dick? <laughs> it's Victoria by two points, 5 4 34, South Australia 5 2 32. It was the Vicks by 13 points at quarter time. Rhett, firstly, let's start with what Victoria did really well in the first term to get on top, and then how South Australia got back in the game. Oh, they really rebounded well off turnover, Victoria. Every mistake the, as a result of the pressure that Victoria placed on South Australia. Mistakes were super costly, and they drove out of there, carried the footy, and then ran broke through the lines. We saw their running capacity and real clean hands by Victoria was the result. They scored so many goals off the back off. But uh, I was impressed with how they adjusted to the pressure early. South Australia were on the back foot and didn't get their hands on the footy until this second term where it did turn. The Vicks threw it around a lot by hand in the first term. They continued to do that in the second term. It wasn't quite as effective, though. South Australia's pressure ramped up and prevented Victoria just being able to link up the way they did. And I think they readjusted at Scopic, South Australia, as well. They didn't allow those easy exits because um, Victoria was coming out with just some fluency and uh, out the front of the stoppage as well, which was a danger. So they got back in front with contested ball, worked hard around there. And uh, I love the balls at the contest. 
everyone going at it with some speed, but making sure that they're controlling the footy. The skills on show today have been outstanding, not only from the likes of Dixon, who's a big man, but every single player. It's just really uh, amazing to watch. Got ourselves a fantastic contest. It's tough at the coalface, South Australia. We've got that potency up forward. Our Max's best player in heavy traffic, the Victorian captain, who set the tone early. He's had 11 possessions, 7 tackles, Don Brew. He uh, really uh, supplies a hard edge for this side, doesn't he? It was a unanimous decision to be captain, and he set the tone in that first term with every ground ball, every attack on the footy. And uh, he is, without doubt, our Max's tyres, best player in heavy traffic. Well, he epitomises State League footy. He's a loyal heart and soul player for his beloved Werribee in this afternoon. The honour of leading the VFL, and it's an honour that means so much to the chippy from Albury. It was a local jumper night and there was an enormous amount of people in the room and Zane popped up on the big screen whilst Jimmy was doing our address and uh, yeah, announced it. Captain and the side of full of the talent that we got is quite special here. Yeah. I played two one-off matches in 2016, one for Werribee and one for Coburg in the development league. I was playing seniors back home for North Albury at the time and Acker was my coach. And I was playing with Shawnee, Manor, and Jace just pretty much told us if you want to make something of it, you've got to move and give it that you crack down in big smoke. So I ended up at Werribee and I've just never left. So I started in the twos and then worked my way through to the ones mid-year and never gave me spot up. And now here we are. <laughs> Winning at BNF in a uh, grand final, making the year and going 17 wins on the trot is, uh, yeah, that's pretty special. Werribee's my club, I've almost got 100 games there, so to get my name on the wall is pretty special. Taking kids when I'm older and be proud of what I did there and, and show them something I'll cherish forever. Playing with blokes like Boyd Wilcock, Dawson and Cosley for the Southport boys, I rate them very highly, so to run alongside them would be great. And to play with blokes like that that have been around the league as long as you is pretty special. I'm really looking forward to doing it. To get tongues wagging, superstars will battle for a spot in the top four when the Bulldogs face the Cats. He pulls the trigger and goes bang! The Saturday Night Footy Blockbuster, live and free on 7. Looking forward to that one. Jump in the car, drive to the Adelaide Oval tonight for the Bulldogs and Geelong. Very much looking forward to it. Well, there's South Australian football royalty everywhere this afternoon, including Simon Tregenza, a Foss Williams medalist, BOG, on the MCG against the Vicks in 1995. And here he is with Soda. What a great uh, name, Simon Tregenza, back in footy. Um, we were just saying, 33 years ago, you got the first kick for the Crows in history against Hawthorne. Have a look at you. You could still play. <laughs> no, I, I disagree with that. No, I certainly couldn't still play, but uh, no, it's a fond memory, and it's nice to be back here for the for a state game. It's, 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 it's you know really good to see. How good's the buzz of Gather Round Trigger? It's just sensational. You can see some of your old mates, I think Tony Modra has been around the place, Andrew Jarman. Yeah. Uh, everyone has descended onto Adelaide. Yeah, no, look, it's great to see. As, you know, the secret's out, I think, a little bit with Adelaide. So um, it's great to see, you know, uh, footy congregating here and, and showing the benefits of uh, Adelaide. We're getting to see some great state footy again, mate. You went back, you played three state of origin games. You picked up that Foss Williams medal. Uh, some of the fondest memories of your footy? Well, I mean, today's the 30 years since the 1994, and it was the only game that I played in state of origin we won. We won by a couple of points, and it was, for me, it was just probably in the, you know, for my career and whatever to, to play in that state of origin game and to get a win against the Vicks was, um, was everything I could dream of. Trigger, great to have you here, mate. I know you're looking very comfortable under the uh, West End canopy over there, so you can sneak back. You're eating sushi and you're having some red cans. Have a great time. Yeah, no worries at all. Got the wristband, so I'm all, all good, mate. <laughs> See you, buddy. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks very Thank much. The great Simon Tregenza is one of many football royalties this afternoon. There he goes. Well, life doesn't always go to plan, neither does footy biggles, which makes perfect sense for the Amy <laughs> Clangers. Let's take a look at some of the action for last weekend. This is the first 10 minutes of the game. Watch Nate Caddy. There goes the tooth. Straight into the back of Sam Wiedemann's head. Nate has to come off to get the tooth placed in the coffee van in a cup of milk. Straight to hospital. 
to get it put back in. Sam Wiedemann then had the tooth buried in the back of his head. He went off for stitches. Enormous collision. Have a look at Ramsey here. So Keenan Ramsey launches a long one from the outside oh, 50. No. And that pitch and backspin, the live golf just around the corner. And that is something John Rahm will be pretty proud of. That backspin there was incredible. Well, Lockie Hosey, one of many players with experience in both the Sandful and the VFL out there this afternoon. He is a goal-kicking powerhouse and he's in form again today. Amongst the best players in the competition to show what we can perform on Saturday and hopefully take it up to, to the VFL side, which would be good. And it's still that rivalry again that's been missing for a couple of years. It's an honour and a privilege to, to be a part of the squad and looking forward to Sunday. Standing start, hooks around his body, no tell me he's kicked and he has! And it was a great vibe of training. Everyone gets along with everyone really well. And Jay Williams really massive on just the pride and, and the contest. We want to go out there and we want, and we want to win and do, and do the state proud. And I think the competitiveness through the players wanting to get a win on Saturday will show on the weekend. And hopefully we can put a little bit of talent on as well and, and a bit of flair to the game. And, and yeah, we'll come over with you. Getting set for third quarter action. It's the Sandful versus the BFL, the Crow Eaters versus the Vicks. It's the Vicks by two points as we start the third term. Thanks to Maxis Tyres, live from Glenelg as part of Gather Round. Victoria by 13 points at the first change. South Australia got back in front in the second term. The Vicks back in front to start the third as Husswaite kicks it inside 50. Ball at the top of the square. Mitch White picks it up. Snaps Goldwood. Doesn't get the angles right. He's missed the lot. South Australian player Riley Knight down in the middle of the ground. Looking pretty sore. Tried to get to his feet. Now he's going to hobble towards the bench. So right now the South Australians are a man down. And Riley Knight looks in all sorts of discomfort. That uh, He's had some issues, of course, after leg surgery. So he cannot put any weight on his left leg at the moment. Now he's inside the centre square and down right now. So they're a man down. Henderson... Knight getting assisted from the field now. And the Vicks take the advantage through Jepson. That numeric advantage, and he gets it to DeClay's 55 from goal as Knight gets carried off. Mitch O'Neill back into the game for South Australia. DeClay's will set himself. Here's a thumping kick here. Man on the mark stands at 52 metres. And apparently it is a 50. Did you have an official complaint at half time? Biggles saying we'll come back to that after the DeClay's <laughs> kick, but. Some scandal here at Glenelg. Mark Soderstrom in all sorts of trouble. Here's the Clays. He sets it up to the top of the square. And beautifully read here by Luke Reynolds. He takes the grab for South Australia. There's been reports of Glenelg officials of, you know, raising the question that Mark Soderstrom posed whether it was a real 50 metre. And we do have the groundsman sending text messages through. You tell Mark Soderstrom it is measured to the millimetre. Well, that kick wasn't quite measured to the millimetre for Victoria and chipping across there was taking the mark, Luke Reynolds. Oh, look, I will apologise, say, if it's a true 50 metres, well, that is great because in the past it wasn't, and I can confirm that because cause I saw you kick don't, three don't from you outside 50 one day and there was no way known you could make the distance. The kick comes in for the Vicks from Henderson up to the top of the square. Hurt stands resolute in defence for South Australia. Here's Bailey and lowers the eyes nicely, and the mark is taken there by Harrison Wick. I You've defy... doubled down on the groundsman. No, you... no, no. I'm going with the groundsman saying absolutely it is a 50 nowadays if that is what they are stating. But in the past it wasn't because you could not kick 50. That is a strong <laughs> mark. Let's get back to the footy because Jackson Callow's mitts have worked nicely for South Australia. Ball bounces inside 50. Hosey's been everywhere. Well done. Brown got back now. Tries to force a scrap and waits for the cavalry to arrive, which it does. Highmore lays the tackle. Well played, Kel Brown. And there is Riley Knight. So as you mentioned, Biggles, a bit of a history of injury issues in recent times. For half of a season after surgery, had his foot in the moon boot for a long time. So fingers crossed, nothing too severe there. Weak off balance, but the kick works perfectly for McBean. And this is the biggest problem for Victoria this afternoon. When these big South Australian forwards are getting quality supply, they are near impossible to stop. So the exit to the defensive side there from stoppage, Harrison Wig, Boyd putting a nice hit out to advantage. Wig sitting off there with time and space, gets it to boot, and a uh, powerful forward, McBean, standing in front, reading it best. Originally from Aberfeldy in Melbourne. Spent four years on the Richmond list between 13 and 16. He's been at Glenelg since 2017. Two premierships, three farmer medals. 
Tigers captain in 2024 here at Glenelg. And he slots another one. South Australia back in front. So the big roosters going hard out at the Maxis replay. Wig just sitting off the contest, but the ability to be able to get ball to boot in an instant. Terrific from Harrison Wig, putting it in a dangerous spot. McBean's always aware. Nice finish to get the first of the second term for South Australia. Nigel Carmody, chairman of selectors for Victoria at half time, said it's the big forwards for South Australia that are causing the problems. They've kicked six goals. Three of them have come to Hosey, two to McBean and one to Reynolds. The Tigers players all on fire for South Australia at the moment. And that tackle there is a good one. And it's come from Harry Grant, the McGarry medalist. He's going to be rewarded. Brilliant work from Grant, burying the shoulder, not allowing every player in the modern game loves to try and test the tackle and break it. Grant was locked on. He goes to weak, weak to sign all. So top of the square again. Which of the big boys is going to stand up this time? Mark couldn't be taken by Hosey. Callow's in there now having a crack at it as well. When you talk about those three Tiger forwards, you throw in Callow as well, the red leg, and that is a really, really good forward line that's going to stretch the forward defend, and big, the defence. Big Harry Boyd down there as well at the moment. His man Crosley beautifully roved off the hands. Snelling tries to work his way through traffic, can't do so. And Cooper was clipped high can relieve the pressure for the Vicks. South Australia by four points, early going third term as Smith finds Woodcock. Now by hand back to Rourke Smith, he'll look down the line. He'll kick it to a one-on-one. -on -one. Watkins is his target. And then sliding in from the back, nicely was proud. He goes to Grant. Good switch of play into the corridor here, open things up. O'Neill to Lowe. Now spreads towards half forward. Great ball use here from South Australia. This is Matthew Allen. You're right, Jase. That's a very intelligent switch to the outer side. Allen goes towards the pocket. Vicks have got numbers behind the football, and one of their interceptors is Lockie Young. Bean couldn't get a run at that one. Young courageous sitting in the hole. Young's kick heard. He's working overtime there. He's up against... Hudson Garoni, who's been in good form up forward in the VFL. Need him to stand up. He'd be one of the players I'd be looking to to get involved heavily in this second half and give them some options up forward. So Boyd at the front of Crossley again. Little handball just misses Hustaway as he was on his way through. Couldn't take it with him. And there's the skipper. It's a good point you make about the Victorian forward line of their five goals, only one of them's come from a, a key forward in Dixon, the rest have been midfield. Yeah, Dixon's was on the run too, coming up at it so, not a real major problem having multiple as, multiple avenues towards goal but you want key forwards kicking a few more Low to Grant and here comes Voss good kick, and here's James Rowe, the former Crow right on 50, puts it up top of the square, Hosey can't take it and a little chance for low again. We know he can be very good up forward. Kicked the goal of the year. It was a soccer-style goal in the Sandful in the past. And we can see there's some issues on the bench there too for South Australia. That's Riley Knight with that left ankle in all sorts. Dangerous position here for the Victorian defence. Crosley's tap. It's socket off the ground by Hosey and he's hit the post. Jackson Callow just received the biggest knee you've ever seen from Crosley right in the middle of his back. He's just and rubbing it two. now. There's not a man of Metzl in the world that's going to cover that one up. Young couldn't keep that alive for Victoria, so it's going to come back. South Australia on top right now. The Vicks just trying to hang in. These key forwards looking dangerous. This is McBean. Well done, Cooper. Time the fist well. Brew. Victoria trying to hang on here. South Australia on top. Ball flipped out to Clays. He links up with Brew. Young, great smother. They maintain the pressure. Good work from Matthew Allen. So Will Snelling's another player. He's having a spell at the moment. He's one that we highlighted in the pregame that we thought would get a stack of the foot. He's just had the three disposals, so look for him to have a, a big impact in this second half. Vicks need to start winning it on the inside and feeding it out as Brew did there to Clays. Crosley, nice tap. Long runs it to Voss, loses the football. South Australia at the moment just seem like they've got more numbers at every contest. 
Ball's flipped over the top. Brown's working back. Coming out is Callow. Runs into some trouble. Umpire says play on. Brew. Woodcock. Throws it on his boot. Down the line towards Garoni, who just can't get into the game right now. Just the four touches for Hudson Garoni. He and Nick Hayes, who have only had three. A two-four to the football that the Vicks would really love. Rhett, even if they're not kicking definitely. goals, to just take marks so they can start to move the football down the ground. Yeah, definitely. But the opportunities haven't been there for them. They need to work themselves in into this game because when Victoria have linked up across half back and stream forward, they've had op- they've had uh, space on their opponent, but uh, a little bit back into their shell in this second term, Victoria. In the second term, I should say, the third term. Hopefully, they'll bounce back out. Hurry, kick forward into attacking 50 for the Vicks. Heard. Oh, a little kick. Dangerous sort of area. That is a terrific tackle. It's done by Campbell Hustwaite, and the umpire said no opportunity. Thirsty work there for Jade Rawlings. Is there Pryor here? Harry Grant took Ooh. a step. That's Pryor. Yeah, lucky not to be rewarded there with a free kick. Crossley takes it out of the ruck. Kick forward. Dribbling there. Max Proud overran it. And a couple of South Aussie boys just locking things up to ensure that there was no way out there for Garoni. So five points to South Australia after Victoria have led. Kick by Woodcock. High ball. I need a snap. at the post. Southport chart. The more they change, the more they stay the same. Boy, Woodcock changing his hair colour, of course, but the bright pink boots that he's well known for. He's best on for the Sharks versus Werribee, as we mentioned. Uh, golden opportunity there. Free kick for a hold. Advantage will be paid. Cooper tried to impact the contest. Hosey's got men wide open. He heads goalward. It's a bouncing football. Callow, can he get there to keep it alive? He can. No Victorian defenders anywhere near him. He waltzes in and belts it through. So Callow has an eternity here on the Max's tyres replay. There isn't a Victorian defender within 25 metres of him as he has time to palm it back to himself. Hosey in disbelief as he thought that ball was actually going through the line. I think perhaps that's what Victoria thought, but that's a big goal. So Jackson Callow adds to South Australia's scoring. So he is the fourth of the big forwards to get on the scoreboard for the Crow Eaters as they take the lead out to 10 points to go into a attack again. Bain and Lowe in his career down and he's going to get a free kick. Yeah, it's going to go against Dawson. So another opportunity here for South Australia. Two goals this term from McBean and Callow. Bain and Lowe's been working really hard as well because the Big forwards have been clunking everything. He hasn't seen too many balls spill. The umpire is going to reward him here with a free kick against Dawson. Premiership player at the Red Leagues in 2022 from 51 metres out, and it's a genuine 51 metres, and it's a genuinely good kick from the little fella from North, North Launceston. South Australia get it. Getting a look here on Max's tyres repo. Bain and Lowe launching into that one on state debut. The Tasmanian giving it everything. That is a big goal. Margin now out to 16 points. The free kick count at the moment, 23-18 in favour of Victoria. Umpires this afternoon, Sam Morgan from the Sandfall, Mitchell Scott from the Sandfall, Jack Howard from the VFL. Well done to them, to all the boundary and goal umpires as well. Wonderful recognition of their performance. Free kick here going the way of the Vicks. It's going to Boyd Woodcock. So the Vicks need to answer the bell here. They trail by 16 points. Delivery from Woodcock inside 50. Garoni gets there on the bounce but can't control it. Henderson puts some good pressure on Allen. And the Vicks need some time in possession and some time in forward half here. Yeah, Victoria's spread has dropped off as well. We saw in that first term when they were dominant from stoppage, their, their spread and work rate to get on the outer, get on their bikes and find the footy. They just need to get that back into their, into their match. Kick back towards the wing. Highmore arrives just in time to spoil the contest. Late whistle, free kick going to Rowe. Cop one high. It's been a really good contest today. James Rowe and Callum Porter coming in as the late inclusion. Just back onto the wing. Nice delivery. Finds Allen. Nice 
Glenelg cohort this afternoon. Massive fly. What a fantastic grab from Kello. Buckets Kello pulls it and a beauty. The highlight reel this afternoon for state footy is going to be a long one. The second time Kello and that is poor Callum Porter who pushed down to provide another number. Brilliant clunk. Hasn't got a great set of hands at the highest point. A little fumbly early in the first term, but it's responded well. This for a 22-point lead and four unanswered goals in the third term. Jackson Callow. 48 out. Launches Goldwood. Plenty of distance, but it slides across the face. Spectacular from the South Australian forwards this afternoon. They've been the difference in the game. Yeah, I mean... South Australia are getting a heap more of the footy if we look at this third term in isolation. 48-31 in the disposal count. Long ball, Mark. Not taken there. Back from Mitch White. Uh, Hurd forward now. Jack Hurd going on to it. The bounce does favour him. Slaps it down. Voss getting involved. And here's a chance now for Zekely. Coming up the half forward. Callow over his head. Highmore. Read that one well. And just... Traverses right across the ground to Bianca as a goal kicker for Victoria in the first half. And he, in turn, sends it out to Young. Up to half forward, Hurd at the front, and he's able to negate Garoni, who's found the going a little tough at this top level. Controlled the airwaves as well in this third term, South Australia, with a mark count heavily in their favour, 19 to 9. Tonight, Adelaide Oval, Bulldogs and Geelong. The Dogs, 2-1. and one. The Cats looking to continue their perfect 3-0 and start. That's coming away this evening. Looking forward to that one. Dogs and Cats. Quick kick from the stoppage. Porter in there scrapping. Long keeps his feet. Good work in there hard by Snelling. Nowhere to go, though. He's going to get penalised. It's going the other way. It's going to South Australia. Well played, Will Snelling. Kick down the line, finds Grant. Fix squarely on the back foot here. South Australia in control. Bailey. Changes the angle again to Finlay now. The aggressive switch to Ryan, and that creates space here for Jez McLennan. South Australia picking holes in this Victorian zone at the moment. McLennan. Goes down the line. Oh, that one, sun in the eyes of Lockie Young. Has been an issue for every player looking towards the northern end of the ground this afternoon. We've seen it, a fair few of those. And then tomorrow, Richmond and St Kilda at the parade. AFL Live on seven right across Gather Round. Big day at Norwood down there at the parade. The Norwood Food and Wine Festival's back on. They'll shut the streets and be partying all afternoon as the handball comes out towards... O'Neill, a kick though, has been cut off and read beautifully by Lockie Young. Wants to get things moving for the Vicks. And the kick just didn't go to the advantage there of Bianco. First touch rule, so it'll be a South Australian ball. Come on! Did hear the Premier talk at the Gather Round Lunch the other day. Great to have the Norwood Food and Wine Festival back. And they said, where had it been? Where had it been for so many years? And he replied with, well, it was a bit of a swim through. It was. It was. <laughs> uh, for the interstaters, if you get your chance to come over to Gather Round one year and you head out to the Norwood Oval. Is that a 50-metre penalty? Must be. Brought him much closer to goal. So Reynolds will shoot from 40. He's already got one on the board now. And that one has just skewed that up a little in the air. It's still alive, though. And... Getting on to it quickly was Brown, who was prominent in the first half with his 19 touches, just up to 22 at the moment, and we'll have things reset in the square. Woodcock traps it on hands and knees. Hosey, he's been terrific at ground level as well. Here's an opportunity now with the kick just going across, and it's going to be punched out of bounds by Young. Corey Lyons pumping it in there. So... South Australia looked very dangerous from stoppage. Hosey tries to provide a block for Jimmy Rowe, but more often than not, it flips back to him. We saw him get a, a goal early in this match as a result of that. Dixon works McBean under it. Brown to Dawson. Around the outer side. This connection is what they need, and Mitch White provides it on this occasion. Haven't been able to link up their line since early in the first term, Victoria. They trail by three goals, and that's going to be 50 as well. So that'll bring Mitch White... Past the centre. Dangerous kick is good for Woodcock. 
South Australia have got numbers back. Chip kick inside 50. Off the hands of the contest. Proud. Back into the square. Only momentarily. Gray. Woodcock. Dawson. Can measure from 45. It's smothered off his boot. Great defence from the South Australians again. Brew. He's taken down. Quick kick. Came from Watkins. And McLennan cuts it off. The Crow Eaters in control right now. Working hard to get there is Luke Reynolds, and he takes the mark on his chest. Casey Voss smother. Goal-saving smother. He went full tilt at it with desperation. It was brilliant, and the pressure in the back half of South Australia certainly lifted. Good kick by Reynolds, able to spot Big Harry Boyd in that 17-point buffer. Dangerous sort of margin for Victoria to deal with as we're closing on three-quarter time. Harry Wig on his left. Callow just held out Highmore who was looking for a free kick and just going over the top there was Gray over his teammate and Cooper and the umpire was plucked out a free kick it's going to go the way of the Vicks Jepson wants to get things moving he's got Woodcock defensive 50 decides to use the corridor to get things moving Henderson his kick was interfered with by Hosey this is Zekley uh, he's quick, Frankie, goes down, goes up, high ball, big boy! Oh, oh Hosey, in front of the home deck, nearly took an absolute cracker, and haven't we seen some great highlights from today? That one he couldn't hold on to as his Glenelg teammate Reynolds comes in and over the top. Gee, that was a good-looking grab, almost. Can't wait to see it. Here we go. Someone's going to oh. burst an eardrum today with the amount of hangers we saw, but Victoria have gone... The, the corridor's almost become an avenue of apprehension for Victoria. They haven't looked to go back in there again. That exit there, they had their vice captain Dawson sitting in the middle of the ground. They didn't use him. They go to the outer side and South Australia lock it in. They need a spark to Vic. Snelling tries to step through the traffic. Rowe taken down in the tackle. He's great. Hacks the kick back towards the wing. Off the hands of Dixon. South Australia at the moment, it feels like controlling the 50 50 balls on the deck. The next goal be, is big, Jace. The next goal to South Australia could be massive in the context. And if Victoria can get one, it will give them some great belief. They need a spark, don't they, Crosley? Out of the ruck. Playing in front was proud. It was picked off nicely by Dawson, but needs some support. Got one high. They've been completely impotent inside 50. Just no dominant forwards at all this afternoon. Can one get on the end of it here? Dawson pops it up. Mitch White the target. Good spoil from that came from Ryan. Picked up by Dixon. Bends at Goldwood. Just outside the lunging Hayes. It's still there. Handball inside. South Australia close it down once more. Ball up. 15 out from the Victorian goal. Three goals, two to one behind this term for South Australia. Big swing in the momentum of the game. It was Victoria plus 13 at quarter time, plus two at the half in South Australia now 17 points up time on in this third term at Glenelg Oval contested footy too was dominated by Victoria essentially in that first half and well they're still plus seven but South Australia really making amends in that area Harry Grant has been huge so too Harry Boyd winning contested ball for South Australia oh, through the hands of Sino oh, bursting through the pack with a little banana type kick was long who kicked the first goal of the game in the opening five minutes and you can just see there that injury there is Riley Knight so his day is done it'll be 50 for not coming back on the nine just to confuse you Jason I think maybe 20 it is 25 meter penalties so the last touch out of bounds rule and 25 meter penalties here today just to throw another spanner in your coin yeah, works. Gee, great. Any other rules we need to be aware of? <laughs> we're just making up on the fly here. <laughs> Short kick to O'Neill. You've got to have a beer at Snout's Bar. That's the only other rule. That's the other rule. The other rule. Got it. Short kick. Harry Grant. Squares it up. Jack Hurd. Off to Voss. Crowheed is in control right now. What can Victoria do to change the momentum of this game? South Australia getting what they like. Weak. Goes down the line. McBean's there. Look at those numbers, though. Three versus one. South Australia looking more energetic right now. The Vicks just dropping off the contest. Come on, 
A trial by 17 points. Late stages of this third term at Glenelg. A minute or so left in this term. Bailey on hands and knees. Sino off the deck looking for a little bit of hope. Hosey lurking dangerously. Victoria's defence standing up okay in that situation. It was Woodcock that got it via Bianco. And the former North Adelaide Rooster Premiership player decides just to send things across the ground to Highmore. Little chip up over the top to Jepson. And they'll go the outer side. Well, the target there, not being able to take the mark there. And also, Clays has had his moments, particularly that second quarter. He was good, been a little quiet since then. What a brilliant match has been put together. Big crowd, perfect conditions. As a credit to Darren Chandler and Jenny Lufton from Victoria to be able to orchestrate this match on Gather Round. And I prefer it not being played all the time between South Australia and Victoria. It's, it's a big point to prove, which is the best competition outside the AFL. It's been done really well today. Brew feeds it back. Dawson puts his head over the football, caught one high. It'd be great to see all sorts of levels of footy emerge to gather around maybe the ammos the vaffa and the sandfall the south australian ammos in the future years turn it into an ongoing annual celebration jake's jake, jake jacob dawson will have the kick after the siren he's going to have to launch this 75 dawson goes with the barrel doesn't hit it and at three quarter time the fix have got plenty of work to do south australia taking control in that third term it's South Australia 8452, Victoria 5535. Seven's coverage is brought to you by Maxis Tires. Performance when it's wanted, safety when it's needed. Flooring back into contention. Can they pounce on the Saints in a Sunday Arvo showdown? Live and free on Seven. Seven's coverage is brought to you by Amy. Lucky you're with Amy. Lawson gives it off and here's a chance for the mix of drawn first blood here at Glenelg Oval. Here's an opportunity at the back. Crew. Bianco. And Bianco goes high ball again after opening up. Oh, that's a great act. Direct towards the square. Options here for South Australia. It gets over the back. McBean a flying shot is good. And South Australia in front. That will go towards their tall targets again. Big fly is a magnificent grab. Bang. Oh, that is a great collect. Nicely done there by Rob Smith. Gives it off and here is a charge for goal. As a beautiful finish by Hugh Dixon, the big man on his left. He heads goalward, it's a bouncing football. Callow, can he get there to keep it alive? He can, no Victorian defenders anywhere near him. He wipes his in and belts it through. All South Australia really since quarter time. They've kicked seven goals to two since the first change and at three quarter time, they lead by 17 points. The SANFL 8 4 52 VFL 5535 with one quarter to play at Glenelg. So we take a look at the overall numbers. And it's been South Australia in complete control through the last couple of quarters on a perfect day at Glenelg. Fans out on the field, great crowd in, enjoying kick to kick at all the quarter breaks. Andrew Dillon, AFL CEO, an accomplished footballer in his own right, won six straight premierships with old Zabs in the Vapper in Victoria, enjoying the festivities. And it is a great festive atmosphere this afternoon, Rhett Biglands, particularly because the South Australians are putting on a show. Getting a bit of feedback there as well, uh, Andrew, and uh, his left foot's still working pretty well, but from a South Australian point of view, after the quarter-time break, they adjusted the way in which they were going about their footy, particularly with not rushing ball in hand. They made too many mistakes in that first term. Just took the edge back of it, wound it back a bit, and then started to use it better. In that third term, when they started to kick away, the Vicks couldn't get hold of it. Harrison Wig connecting up really well. The midfield's combining, and they end up getting two goals that originated from stoppage, so that was vitally important. They really did look dangerous inside their front half. So South Australia, a man down. Riley Knight. Not a lot in history, and he's out of the game. Yeah, that, that's the concerning thing in the way in which he went down and couldn't put pressure on that. That'll break the hearts of uh, Wood of West Torrens supporters. He's a vital prime mover for them. Final quarter action coming your way thanks to Amy 
Victoria with plenty of work to do. They trail by 17 points. They've got to get back to that early game form of winning it on the inside, spreading it to the outside, and then trying to find a winner in the front half, Soda, because so far they haven't been able to find one. Big third quarter by South Australia, and that has made a massive difference. They were down by two points at halftime. They're up by 17 points now. Final term of what has been a great interstate clash here. Straight away they get things moving. Harry Wig coming off the wing, goes forward, getting back onto it. It's white, and here's a chance for McBean. He can't, the big unit, get down and flick it through quick enough, and the ball will head out of bounds. It was touched, so it won't be last possession. Chance now for South Australia to reset, just 20 out from goal. Cooper's smother was brilliant, wasn't it? It saved another goal. McBean would have been on the board early, just diving on a grenade. Well, Crossley works his way to the front. Handball was from Jepson trying to get involved. Then it comes out to Bianco. He's gone high just outside his defensive 50. Strong work by Sinor, the skipper, just trying to bullock him his way through. Low with a bump. Handball comes out to Voss. High ball floating into the pocket and out of bounds. So opportunity for the Vicks. Highmore will bring it back. Where's that winner forward of the ball going to come from for Victoria? Who can get hot here? Highmore up the middle. Nice kick to Cal Brown, who was everywhere in the first half. Only five touches, four touches, in fact, since half time after 19 in the first half. Where can they generate some run and movement from? Rock Smith. There's some overlap. Long to Young. Not a great kick inside 50. Gave Watkins no chance. And it's easily picked off by the solid Jez McLennan. He comes inside to Grant. Here's an opportunity for the Vicks. Dixon needs some support, though. Gets rid of a couple. Crosley, where's the runners for Victoria? The big men are having to get down and dirty and try to hold it in the front half. They've just got no support at ground level. And in the end, a 50-50 result, a good one for Victoria. It's good work by Huey Dixon. Biggles did all the hard work there, but Crosley just couldn't help him finish things off. He needed some support from the Fleet Footer Brigade. Crosley, certainly not that. Boyd down to sign off. The skipper... He's on hands and knees again as it comes out to Brew, who's set the example from Victoria right from the start. He has been tough. Nine tackles. He had seven tackles in the first quarter and a bit. And there's, speaking of tackles, Hosey did really well there. And that'll be last possession. So chance for SA. And here's little Bain and Lowe, who's on the scoreboard. That agility of Hugh Dixon, we've seen so many players who we feel are very unlucky to have been cut from the AFL list. He was one of those I thought at West Coast could have got more of an opportunity. And again, with so many recruiters and list managers here in the grandstands today, there's players throwing their name up for the mid-season draft. South Australia's key forwards have been just so damaging. Crosley against Boyd. Boyd got front spot. Brown... Taken down, good tackle. Quick kick from Woodcock. Ryan stands underneath it. Ball ricochets around. Hits the deck. Lawson needs to get involved for Victoria. He's the sort of mercurial player that can impact a game for Victoria. They need something out of the likes of Sam Lawson. Some zip in the front half. It's been sorely lacking. Boyd. Yeah, look at those numbers. South Australians to the contest first. It's been the story since quarter time. McLennan, really smart, gets around Brown. Callow, good strong hands. McLennan has been brilliant, hasn't he, Jace? Right up in the running for the Foss Williams medal if South Australia get over the line. Callow's been outstanding as well. That one wide, and it's Young floating across to take the grab. But it's all being played in the offensive half at the moment for Victoria. High more. Support with Young again up into the cool. wing. Oh, there's some really good hands now. They just needed that. With the kick came from Porter to Dixon. And here we go, running an open goal. Just what Victoria needed. And the finish is from Ned Long. So he got there first. And finally, the Vicks get another. Oh, just prior to this, Dixon airborne on the Amy replay. Destroyed it. Now, Ned Long today, his offensive run has been brilliant. He has really covered the territory for his second goal of the game. 15 disposals. Been working up and back. 
Been one of the Victorians' better players this afternoon. Five minutes gone, final two. Margin back to 11 points. Gee, this next goal suddenly becomes really important. Can the Vicks get a spark from that one? Woodcock inside 50. Off hands. Can Garoni get involved? Hurd has been all over him this afternoon. Done a fine job. Hudson Garoni just the four touches. Nick Hayes only three. Hurd went with the right spoil over the shoulder as well. Could have easily been taken high on Garoni. Umpire goes down. Crosley the second tap. High kick from Grant. Gray works underneath it against Snelling who kept his feet and feeds the handball out to Wig. McLennan chips it short. Good pressure there from Gray. Didn't concede the uncontested mark to Snelling and keeps it in the front half of Victoria. Now this is where we've seen Victoria lose concentration at stoppage. So it's a big moment now at half forward for them. They need to get organised, get everyone uh, in their right spots, make sure everyone's covered as well. No easy exits. And that'll give you forwards the best opportunity. But McLennan is going to sit back in the hole. Brew, Dawson, Brown all there. Week first to get his hands on it. He gets swallowed up. Brew puts his head down. Nice rolled up in a small package. Dawson. Gray needs to get rid of it quickly. Oh, somehow got through three. Off to Lawson. He pins the ears back and misses. Oh, what a lifter that would have been for Victoria. He's missed the lot. Brilliant from George Gray. As spectacular from the Frankston Dolphin, wasn't it? Just working his way through there. And it was a little bit of miscommunication. McLennan sat off that stoppage. They got their way through it and could have easily been back-to-back -back goals for the big V. Bianco is on hands and knees, filed it out, but it comes to Allen. Long kick, Mark by McBean, not completed. Reynolds getting in there as well. There's Rowe, normally pretty good in tight positions. Kick is good, it's a little wobbler, and the mark's been taken by Hosey. So he has been one of the prominent stars up front, Lockie Hosey. Trent Bianco, not totally convinced this ball was marked in the field of play. He was lucky he didn't give away a 25-metre penalty. No, he was clearly in inside. And Hosey just eats these for breakfast. He's kicked 3-1, the Tiger. And this kick, oh boy, that is an absolute ripper. He's got four. Well, Hosey's had some highlights, but the Amy replay here is giving us another gem. How does he bend that back from that sort of distance? Just makes it look so easy. Four goals. Lockie Hosey, wonderful, absolute jet. Wonderful response from South Australia. They shut the door on that little revival from Victoria. Crosley down to Dawson. Good win there from O'Neill. Bounces it towards half forward. The Vic's getting caught out on defensive transition at the moment. Snelling goes inside 50. McBean off his hands. Hosey taken aground. A couple of times, Biggles, it's been South Australia streaming forward. The Vicks just not able to go with them. He's snelling with the drive there. That kick was to advantage. It was a really good kick. Nice spoil in the end, though, as Reynolds flew. Crosley lays it down for Woodcock. Henderson versus Bailey. Bounces towards the line. Last touch for all South Australia. All right, it's going to be a throw in. Bailey having a laugh. Confusing all. Must have, he must have just touched it before it got to the line. Tried to sell it. Umpire wasn't buying. Crosley and Boyd. We'll get over the back. Zeckerly. Bounces it inside 50. Gray against Snelling. Brown extracts it. White. Brown in trouble. Good support there from Jepson. Hits the kick wide. Not exactly where he intended it, but it'll work okay. De Clace links up with Husswaite, pops a handball over. Good effort there from Young. Husswaite gets one down from behind to get the handball away. Play on the call. Dawson comes hard at the football. Grant goes the other way. Dawson may have been taken high. Umpire was blindsided. And that's one of Matthew Allen's strengths. Might not be having his normal output as far as numbers and goal kicking ability, but running down and staying with the play. Terrific chase down from behind. Boyd down as the ball. It was that over line 4,207 the crowd which pretty healthy for a Saturday afternoon well, obviously Sydney and West Coast are going head to head in Mount Barker and the Adelaide Hills at the moment plenty of footy still to come as well and the big one tonight on Channel 7 following the news is going to be the Cats and Dogs Dixon little fumble at a crucial time 
The hurry kick came from Lyons. Callow doing the tackling. Uh, we've got a reset here. 60 out from the SA goal. And that lead restored back to the 17 oh, points. Wow. Great tap by Boyd to Allen. But the smother was good from Jepson, and we have another chance to reset things here in the pocket. Nothing excites me more than when a ruckman just puts a little snowflake down in the path of his on baller and clears that stoppage. Just perfect. He's been good, Boyd. Not an easy opponent there, Crosley. Hello up the front. Boyd Woodcock couldn't get an effective kick. White put the head down. The Clay's high kick. Garoni will arrive. Good fist away over the top from Boyd. See the South Australian selectors looking a little bit more comfortable after the first term when Tory came out of the blocks. Tim Ginova, of course, James Gallagher, the former list manager from St Kilda, and Matty Doldick are on the edge of their seats early, looking very nervous. But this game, 11 minutes gone in this final term, still in the balance. South Australia in control, though, on the scoreboard. They lead it by 17 points. Victoria need to start clearing this congestion. Dixon a little tap. Brew try to get the hands free towards Brown. Ball into the hands of Sinor. Keeps his feet, wins the football, dishes it off. Allen couldn't get an effective kick. Woodcock can. It'll go down the line. Garoni gets monstered by Ryan, who could have taken the mark, but the spoil was even more effective. Off to Corey Lyons. He delivers it inside 50 again. It'll get over the back. Will it sit for McBean? It won't. Hits the behind post. Throw in. Corey Lyons about to come from the field as he got that kick away. He was cleaned up. He's got a bit of a hip issue. So we'll keep an eye on him. Heard comes back on. They've really rotated well across their back half. Gee, their key have been good today. Josh Ryan, Jack Hurd just completely shut the Victorian forwards down. Callow kick smothered off his boot. White nowhere to go. Zeckerly off to O'Neill. He swings at Goldwoods and misses right. It's a gettable one for Mitch O'Neill. He's had 16 disposals today. Eight of those contested, which has been important. Contested possession count still pretty tight here, Glenelg. Well, Tommy Highmore's kick. Well, fell into the lap. Casey Voss. And he's done well to Reynolds. Lowers the eyes perfectly. And here's another opportunity for South Australia. Reynolds just looking for his Glenelg teammate, Matty Allen. And he'll have a shot from 40. So three goals is the buffer at the moment. I've set up well South Australia, didn't they, with that ball trying to exit out D50 for the Vicks. You can just see... South Australia getting organised and spreading the space. As soon as they won the ball back, it was multiple options. Matty Allen coming off a good game in round one. 25 touches and three goals against Port Adelaide. It was a massacre for the Tigers against the Maggies. And here's a chance for the former West Coast Eagle listed player. And he sneaks it through. They're out by four goals now. South Australia looking very good. Uh, Matthew Allen's goal kicking style on the Amy replay so many weapons he has in his arsenal forward back wing on ball we saw him do a 60 metre pass earlier on in this game which just caught so many of the defenders out he's a gun marching out at four straight kicks Dixon into the ruck there's the goal kicker Allen winning it and getting it inside 50 Rowe beats his man pulls the kick you can see he was trying to get it to Finlay was cut off. McLennan, Dixon over the top. Handball floats forward. Henderson, Brown knew he was immediately under pressure. Can Watkins get involved? It's been a quiet day for Jack. Henderson slides in. Play on the call. O'Neill taken down in the tackle. Release the handball. Gray fights his way through. Now to Dixon. Can he find someone inside 50? Woodcock couldn't complete it. South Australia scrapping desperately across half back. Bailey in over the top. Ball up. Crow is giving nothing away. They're in complete control right now. Here's the Victorian box. Adam Scroblack. Ben Hudson. Just have not been able to find 
a winner forward of centre this afternoon and you contrast that to South Australia and their forwards have just been dynamite. So Victoria, three goals to one in the first quarter. It's been nine goals to three since and all South Australia's goals coming from Glenelg and Norwood players as little give from Allen went over the top to Snelling. High ball running out on his own there is White. He's got some support from Cooper. And exits the defensive 50. One on one, Ryan not be able to get there in time for Hayes. And gives it off to the Clays. And he runs himself in a little bit of trouble. Free kick though is going to go against O'Neill. So here it's Jack Henderson out of wing. And edging towards time on. And Victoria need a hurry up. Gray runs inside from 40 and this is to the right. Good run and drive. That's really had has dried up for Victoria. They haven't seen that speed off the back of the line after half time. This is the best of 21 clubs. So, Joseph, is that correct for Victoria? That the uh, obviously selectors had to pick from, put forward by the clubs, their best players, whereas South Australia just the 10 clubs to pick from? Yeah. Yes. This one's up and down the, uh, the entire eastern seaboard. Here's Dixon. Delivers inside 50. Garoni forces a contest. Swooping in. Well played by Lawson. Off to Woodcock, steps a man, gives it to Garoni, has to be quick, to the pocket. Watkins goes goalward, great defence. Goal line defence there from Casey Voss. Saves the day for South Australia. Uh, the former Foss Williams medalist with his head over it, complete concentration on the goal line. Coaches love that sort of stuff, not giving them an inch. Kick on the exit, misses the target, shows it to Henderson. Can't get past Zekali. He lays the tackle and forces the throw. South Australian ball. Frankie Zekali just sends it out to Bailey. He's another great player for Glenelg. Son of Dean Bailey. Of course, a high ball. Running back. We saw a little bit of him earlier coming. Was Porter was the late inclusion. Oh, this kick, though, has been cut off by Snelling, who's come into the game in this second half. Burns the ball really quickly and hands it straight back to Rourke Smith. The umpire's down. And Victoria <laughs> keep going by Jepson. It certainly got the crowd a little excited. <laughs> Gave a wave of appreciation to the crowd as well. I don't know why the crowd enjoyed umpire falling over so much, but it's a big game tonight. Huge game. Cats and dogs. Adelaide Oval, part of a double header that's going on there with Carlton and Frio before that. Just a huge festival of footy during gather round as Dixon in the ruck palms it down. And tackle from Week, just ensuring that the skipper there, Don Brew, can't get his way out of that. This margin remains in favour of the Crow Eaters. Some names been thrown up. Harry Grant and McLennan, Week for the Foss Williams medal. Will be outstanding this afternoon. Foss. Done his job superbly down back, as have all the South Australian defenders. That SA defence has been watertight for most of the afternoon. Well organised behind the football today. Vicks have struggled to penetrate. Bailey. Jepson off his fingertips. Receives it back from Highmore. It's a little step from Jepson. The kick inside is tidy and finds Woodcock 65 from goal. Good numbers back again, though, for South Australia. Woodcock steps a man, oh. caught on high from Snelling. Locals didn't like it, but it was clearly there. Yeah, just as he went down, Snelling just got him high, without doubt. Woodcock chips it up inside 50, the big fly from Garoni. McLennan at the back, it's pinched. Rourke Smith throws it on his boot and misses to the right. Doesn't need too many disposals to hurt you. Rourke Smith. Saw him take an incredible mark early. He's had 11 touches today for his one goal one. A couple of tackles also. Voss looking for Callow. He also had Reynolds. Neither could get hold of it. Still on ground level. It's Callow on the bottom of it. 
really didn't bite at that little cockle I just threw out there before, Jace, about the best of being selected. Fire Victoria, this, if we do win this one, this is the best you've got, is it? I might bring Harry Petty to the conversation because <laughs> that's the direction you're heading in. <laughs> it won't back down from Petty. <laughs> Hugh Dixon wrapped up. Boyd, nice tap. Woodcock picked it off. Long drives it long. Bouncing football towards the pocket. And Hayes can't control it. Great to have state footy back between these so two good. wonderful states. Hopefully this can become a regular feature of gather round. Bring the state leagues together from around the country. And in, in the defence, it was just one training session for Victoria to get together. It is so good to train with the, the best from around the league and work out what they do, and pick the brains of your opposition normally. And Don't start now, Biggles. Just Don't gonna... start now. We don't want your pity. We want your pity. Mark's, Mark <laughs> Soderstrom, proud Victorian. <laughs> Fair retreat from Biggles, wasn't it? The big South Aussie just wants to throw it all out there and then as soon as he cops it. Won six of the last seven, South Australia. Here's the chance now for the Vicks. We go forward, Dawson, and he pops it onto the chest of Lawson, who really started the game well, set the scene for the Vicks. But it has been tough since then, only the three goals since quarter time, and essentially they need four now in the last few minutes. So Sammy Lawson will shoot from directly in front, 40 out, just to try and keep that pulse going for Victoria, and he pulls it across. But in fairness to South Australia, Biggles, the SANFL and South Australian footy have taken state footy really seriously. They've put together a cohesive program. You've got guys here that are playing third, fourth year in a row as part of a program. And for Victoria, I think the message here is they need to start doing the same thing. Play more regularly, build a squad, build the core of a group, as you say, rather than just bring a, a group together for one training session. Makes it hard to compete against teams that have been get, had a core together for multiple years. Here's Young. He goes inside 50 once again. Boyd sits back there. There's a hold. It's going Victoria's way. It's going to Boyd Woodcock. 30 metres out directly in front. Tried hard this afternoon. This will be his 27th touch. Tying Cal Brown for the most disposals on the ground. Harry Grant's had 25 for South Australia. Woodcock directly in front. Pulls one back. Woodcock's hold there. We can just see on the Amy replay. Bailey getting a fistful of jumper and has been one of the better players for the big V today. Boyd Woodcock, 27 disposals for one goal, one. Six clearances. Perform admirably. The boy from Butte. 14 points, the margin. Still time for Victoria with a few minutes left. They need a quick reply right now. Brew, kick off the ground, mate for South Australia. Just comes at exactly the right time. McBean to Callo. Tries to return the favour and slap it back. Defence holding up well for the VFL now. Bianco under pressure. Able to just soccer it off the deck. Now here we go. Here's a chance now for Smith. Into open territory. How's the bounce go? Proud and Allen. Working overtime is Ned Long who's had some really good moments. Handball comes out. Here's a chance there with the kick. Oh, it's going to miss. Jeez, Cal Brown could have really made things interesting and put it within single figures then. They've had some opportunities in this final term. They've kicked two goals, four with at least two out of bounds on the fall. And the margin remains at 14. Spot on, Jason. Brown had a lot more time there. Could have easily just stepped with that one. Drop punt. Heard has been so solid down back. Thumps it long, Boyd. The target and in front of him is Callo, whose hands have just been outstanding this afternoon. He's certainly showcased himself in the best possible light in front of AFL recruiters. Goes towards Boyd. Spills to Dawson. Fall away handball to Clace. Inside to Highmore. Now to Brew. Bounces it down the line. Porter. Another inside 50 for the Vicks, but it's a two-on-one, and up in front is Matthew Allen. 
Statistics can often confuse you, Jace, but when looking at the handball stats at the moment, 162 to 95, and the handball received 133 to 67. We thought the handball was used as a weapon for Victoria in the first quarter, but perhaps now you look at those numbers and think, is there an overuse? It hasn't really stood out in the game so far, but I just think the way in which SA sharpened up their ball use after that quarter time break made a big difference. Yeah, they just didn't penetrate with the handball, did they? They didn't get that forward movement and get that overlap going. South Australia did a superb job of shutting that down after quarter time. Zekali off the side of his boot. It's going to float wide and into the crowd. So we hit the 27-minute mark. 14-point game in favour of the Crow Eaters. Harry Grant now 25 disposals the Crow Eaters, 24 to Jess McLevin, who's been brilliant half back. Cal Brown with 28 and Woodcock with 27 for the Big V. Highmore. Off to DeClays. Has a bounce, draws a man, punches a handball, but misses Porter. Danger here for Victoria. Hosey pounces. They've got numbers forward to the football. Callow couldn't quite control it. Lays a strong tackle on Highmore. Lunges in on the footy ball, spills out. Grant in there working hard. Desperate scramble. Another ball up. So Foss Williams medal awarded to the best South Australian player, the Frank Johnson medal for Victoria. With the tap. Nowhere for Lions. Such, to go. A, such an honour when you talk to players who have won it. Of course, Frank Johnson, the Australian Hall of Famer. And uh, Foss Williams was just an icon. The Crow Eaters have done it again. The Sandfall continues its modern-day dominance with another win over the VFL. It's an afternoon to remember for the Sandfall at Glenelg Oval. Well, that's an impressive performance, particularly after quarter time when they were fumbly. They weren't using the ball that well. Their leadership stood up, and that was the important point. We mentioned in the pregame about how premiership players would be vital in this game for South Australia, and that really showed in the end the likes of Sinor. Also, the Glenelg forwards standing up. They had a big day in the end. Lockie Hosey was sniffing five. Ended up with four majors. McBean had a couple. And that potent forward line for South Australia was really hard to stop in the end. Inside forward 50 count wasn't that heavily in favour of SA, but just the weapons they had up there. Early on when the Vicks dominated the middle of the ground, they were able to put the score on the board just by sheer weight of number. In fact, it was the speed of the entries, wasn't it? They were coming out, I remember you mentioning, out the front of the stoppage before the South Australian defence could set. Once South Australia got that balance right in the middle, the Vicks really struggled. Yeah, they needed to just adjust the defensive part of their game, South Australia. Not, not a, get too much ahead of the ball and really search that look of the ice cream, but it was a great response. Lockie Hosey booted four goals this afternoon for South Australia, and here he is with Soda. Lockie, congratulations. Uh, what a wonderful day of part of a huge weekend. And after, well, a bit of a slow start, you're able to bring it together with your mates. Yeah, it was good, mate. Um, awesome to get the win. Um, I reckon it was an awesome spectacle for not only uh, the gather around, but for, for SA footy and for the Vicks to come over and put on a, a, a good fight it was great. But so proud of the guys. Come together this week. And um, I think the, the pride showed today and how we got across the line. And it was good fun, mate. So good. Lucky, uh, big forward line, of course, with yourself, Liam McBean. You had Jackson Callow there from Norwood, uh, and also Lukey Reynolds. And it was just a great performance, nice even performance by all of you that Victoria really struggled to combat. I think that's the key. I think we found that as a weapon this um, this week and going into the game, our forward line. And obviously to play um, with Liam and Luke um, is uh, you know, like a privilege every week. And then Jacko today, he just showed how good he is in the competition. So um, even this week, we gelled together really nicely, and it was good to put on a show. What about for you, mate? Uh, getting the opportunity to put this jumper on, um, what does it feel like? Oh, it means so much. Like you get, you have the greats come in and speak to he, um, speak to us how much it means to them. Um, and then when you put the Guernsey on, you know you feel an enormous amount of pride. Um, and you know we, we're lucky to get to do it twice this year. And um, you know really happy to get a win. And um, we celebrate with a couple of years after. Tell us, uh, half time when you're looking at it, you obviously worked your way back in, it was very tight then, but that third quarter was outstanding. Uh, what was Twig's advice during that main break? I think just enjoy it. I think, um, you know, we were a bit sloppy in the contest and we f fumbled around with it at the start. And, um, you know, with the forward line we had, if we if we put our head over it and started getting ground ball um, and got it forward, I think it showed in that um, third quarter the firepower we had up forward and Smalls got involved and we were able to kick away from him.
Lockie, congratulations on the individual performance. We'll get that out, but congratulations on the team. Great win for the sample. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Great afternoon of state football. It's the Crow Eaters triumphant at Glenelg. Our post-match presentation, including the announcement of the Foss Williams and Frank Johnson medal winners, next. It was the Vicks in control early. They led by 13 points at quarter time, but after that it was all South Australia. They kicked nine goals to four. To run out 14 point winners, 10 5 65, defeating Victoria 7 9 51 at Glenelg in what was a spirited contest. Some high quality football played by both teams, but in the end, Rhett Biglin, South Australia, dominant across all three zones. High quality football and certainly uh, high quality highlights. There was some unbelievable area display. You mentioned those three zones in which they worked defensively and then linked up through the middle. But once they got inside attacking 50, there were so many weapons up there they just couldn't stop. Hosey was brilliant with four, could have easily kicked five. McBean did his bit as well. And I thought their ball movement going in there, once after the quarter time when they were a little bit untidy with that sort of uh, ball going into attack, they tied that up and really hit the target. So the Vicks had more disposals for most of the day. They had more inside 50s for most of the day as well. But South Australia just more efficient. Yeah, and that probably is um, a result of the defensive pressure that South Australia put on in their back half. They worked good as a unit back there, didn't they? We saw Jess McLennan rebounding off right from the start of the match, used the ball well, and that set up everything in front of the ball. Yeah, they were cohesive between all their lines. They linked together really well. Once they got over that early onslaught from Victoria, they got the game on their terms and they controlled it. Yeah, and the pressure, I thought, in the first term by Victoria was right on the level. They needed to maintain that. When that fell away, that's where we saw the easy ball movement via South Australia. So it only just takes that little margin drop-off, doesn't it, to cost you? Time now for our post-game presentations. Here's our Master of Ceremonies, Mark Soderstrom. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, thank you so much for coming down to the bay here to celebrate this component of Gather Around. More than 4,000 of you have come along. So thanks so much. It's been a wonderful day. Representative footy, the Sandful versus the VFL. Congratulations to the Sandful for winning the 2024 Amy State game. Well done, boys. Just like to acknowledge and thank the umpires from today. Please join me thanking our field goal and boundary umpires. And as always, uh, wonderful performance by all of you and the recognition of getting selected to officiate during today is fantastic. So well done. And before we present the cup, can you please welcome the captain of the VFL, Dom Brew, to say a few words. Too good today, boys. Um, fantastic. Uh, it's good to get the rivalry back and good to have some rep footy for the Vic boys. Uh, thank you to all our uh, families and everyone that come over from Victoria and further. Appreciate you. But uh, too good today, boys. Enjoy it and uh, all the best for the rest of the year, lads. Thank you. Good on you, Dom. Well done. The Foss Williams medal is presented to the Sandfall's best player of today. Foss Williams, of course, seven-time premiership player, nine-time Premiership coach, played more than 200 games for Westies and Port Adelaide. And could you please welcome Luke Powell, SA Football Commissioner, to present the Foss Williams medal to SA's best player today. Powley, great to see you. The winner of the Foss Williams medal for 2024, Jez McLennan. Firstly, um, well done to the Victorian boys. Um, they came out and, and threw a, a few really good punches, which we mashed, um, and well done to the SA boys. Um, it's really great to have this game back and running again, so thanks to everyone for putting it together. Thanks to the crowd as well. Um, we all really enjoyed it, so yeah, thank you. Cheers. Good on you, Jez. Congratulations. Uh, wonderful performance. The Frank Johnson medal is for the VFL's best player, Frank Johnson, a star with Port Melbourne and South Melbourne, the youngest winner of the Liston Trophy in the old school VFA, two-time All-Australian as well. To present the Frank Johnson medal, can you please welcome Josh Marnie, the General Manager of Football Operations at the AFL, and the winner of the Frank Johnson medal, Callum Brown. Um, yeah, I just want to say thanks to SA first of all. It's really good to be able to put this showcase on again and you guys were 
definitely a better team on the day, so congrats. And then, um, yeah, to our boys, fought hard. Uh, it was a good game. We, um, yeah, really enjoyed having this at the end, so hopefully it can be a tradition for a few more years to come. Cheers. And to present the cup to our winning team, please welcome uh, Andrew Dillon, CEO of the AFL, who was looking very impressive having a kick during the game today. Good to see you, Andrew. Thanks so much for coming over. Thanks for gathering around too. It's a wonderful spectacle here in South Australia. Everyone's proud to be hosting it. Uh, congratulations to the winning captain and coach for the Sandfall, Joe Sinor and Jade Rawlings. Thanks very much to see Andrew Dillon come down here and be able to present us with this cup, show us how the AFL rates stay footy. I just want to commend the VFL to come together in a short amount of time, Zane and your coaching group. It was really impressive how the guys played. And we value state footy really highly over here. You know, these guys don't fluke getting a jumper. And hopefully you saw people who attended today that they played with a lot of spirit and really tough they need to be. So we get to play again against Western Australia in six weeks and we're looking forward to seeing what we can do over there. So thanks to the crowd for coming down too. It's been great to have it at a local ground at Glenelg. Yeah, first of all, thanks to the SNFL and the VFL for making this possible. Um, it's a real privilege to be able to come out here today and play in this great contest, so hopefully we can continue to do it. To our sponsors, West End and Amy, thank you very much. Um, to the VFL boys, certainly gave us a red-out crack, and um, hopefully we can share a bit tonight. Thanks. Ronnie Joe, congratulations to the sample team. Well done to the VFL team. Thanks so much for coming over. Congratulations to all the boys that were selected. A huge thank you to both the leagues, the Sandful and the VFL, and also to the AFL. Great to see so many people down here celebrating, gather around, make sure there's still plenty of footy to come this afternoon, tonight and tomorrow. So please get involved. Again, uh, thank you so much and congratulations to Sandful. Sample too good this afternoon. They run out 14 point winners, 10 5 65, defeating the VFL 7 9 51. More from Glenelg in just a moment. So much sport to enjoy on 7 Plus, including Sandful, VFL and Waffle each and every weekend. And this afternoon to the victor, the spoils, the Sandful, 14-point winners, 10-5-65, defeat the VFL, 7-9-51 in a spectacular day at Glenelg Oval. Jason Bennett alongside Rhett Biglands. And one word that really sums up the South Australian performance, I think, Biggles, is cohesion. They were so cohesive. They looked like a program that have spent some time together. They've got a core group that have played together, and it showed this afternoon. Just a handful of debutantes for South Australia this afternoon. So there's been experience, you're right, Jace, experience of players who know how to play up at that next level because this is the pinnacle, of course, outside of the AFL, of these performance and the pressure that we saw. And, uh, well, if you're looking at the statistics here, they overused the handball a lot. It's not on this sheet, but certainly the Victorians overused the handball just a little bit too much. When they break down this game, the coaching staff, they may have thought they could have gone by a foot a little bit more. It got them into a little bit of trouble. It was effective early. It was an offensive weapon early to be able to take them on. But once the uh, South Australians adjusted and put that pressure back on the Victorians, driving it back into their uh, attack, I, I thought it was a big turnaround, big shift. Congratulations to our medalist, Jez McLennan, the Foss Williams medalist this afternoon. What did you make of Jez's game? Because when they were under the pump early, he was outstanding. Yeah, his ability to be able to read the play and set up, and not only just read the play, but orchestrate his defenders around him. It was probably best on ground last week. was unlucky not to receive the award uh, for Central Districts versus North Adelaide. So coming back from the Gold Coast. He's been a standout, elevated to the leadership group and um, off the back of his disposals today, 24 of those, eight marks, four marks off the opposition for Jess McClendon. Thought he was brilliant. And then for Victoria, best on ground, the Frank Johnson medal went to Cal Brown, who had 19 touches in the first half, ended up with 28, tried hard all day. 
He did. Um, he was probably run out of gas in the end. He threw everything at the Crow Eaters in the first half. In these highlights here, we're, we're sort of looking at how the defenders for Victoria can get that much space against the weapons that the Crow Eaters have, but there were so many highlights. That's impossible to stop. Some of the highlights we saw, particularly in the aerial contest today, were remarkable. Posey was on fire, McBean was brilliant, and uh, Jackson Callow, moose of a man, and he crashed a couple of packs today where you were really fearful for injuries. In a normal situation, you'd look at four talls and a forward line and go, oh, geez, is that going to be a bit clunky? They're going to get in each other's way. But again, you talk about cohesion and chemistry. These Glenelg guys play together every week, so that was not a problem. They're probably not the genuine talls you think of in that their mobility on the ground and their ability to take a ground ball as well is incredible. We, we see Callow turning back on one here. McBean at times plays like a midfielder how he gets his own ball off a ruck contest. Hosey's the same. He can compete in the air, hit the ground and gather up. And um, they've just got too many a assets to be able to stop. As a defender, you're not sure whether to play back shoulder, front shoulder, get them on the ground. And in the end, the, end, the, the forward line was a difference, no doubt about it. So glowing reports this afternoon from all involved, wanting this to become a more regular feature. I certainly think the idea of having state league footy in gather round, it belongs here. I think we could bring the next level of amateur footy in and bring that to gather round as well and really celebrate the fact that footy is not just about the top level, it's about all the levels. Spot on. And it was so good to hear the players from both sides talk about the passion, the rivalry, the hatred as well. After the game, doing their interviews, they wanted to stay. And why wouldn't you want to play against the best? So much more footy to look forward to as Gather Round does roll on and you'll see it all live and free right here on 7. Tonight we're at the Adelaide Oval. It's the Western Bulldogs and Geelong. The Dogs 2-1. and one. The Cats are perfect 3-0. and oh. That's coming your way tonight on 7 AFL and 7, mate, from 6.30 South Australia, 7 p.m. Eastern. Then tomorrow we're at Norwood as St Kilda meet Richmond. Both teams dealing with crippling injury lists. The Tigers full of confidence, that great win last week over Sydney. The Saints will be breathing fire. They let one slip against the Bombers. St Kilda and Richmond tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern, 2 p.m. SA on 7 AFL. What do you make of those two? Dogs, Geelong? Well, in recent times, the Cats have owned the Dogs, but if you think back to the final round of last year, the Dogs got one back. So I think prior to that, five victories to the Cats. So this is a neutral ground. Dogs are on the rise. Cats have certainly vastly improved from where they were last year. It's going to be a really good game. I think the Cats will get over the line by two goals. And then tomorrow at St Kilda and Richmond at the parade. Well, at a smaller oval, that's the big difference. The parade is a much smaller oval, so um, that one could, is a flip of the coin. Still can't pick that one yet. I'm not going to commit, Jase. And such a critical game for both those teams. They look to keep in touch with the chasing pack. Well, that wraps up our coverage this afternoon. State footy from Glenelg Oval on behalf of Rhett Biglands, Mark Soderstrom, our entire production team. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. It was the SANFL 14-point winners over the Big V. In front, the group, and this little kick around the corner is a good one. Pitch. Hello, providing a little targets again. Big fly. Big big little barber stash. Look at the chocolate room. Probably bought this afternoon. Massive.